Welcome to Uptown Rumble, heavy music in the Bronx. My name is Stephen Payne, director of the Bronx County Historical Society. Today is February 29th, 2024, um, and very happy to be here with Demised. Uh, what's up, Demised? Thank y'all for joining. Um, and do y'all want to just introduce yourselves real quickly um, before we get going? Gio, why don't you go ahead and start? My name is Giovanni Ruiz Estrella. Everybody calls me Gio. Born in the Dominican Republic. Came to the United States in 1985, March, and been here ever since. And uh, what's your position in Demised and uh, other bands, if you want to? Originally, I was a uh, guitarist. I fluctuate back back and forth depending on what we need. Okay. Drums or guitar, but Dr right now guitar. Drums and guitars. Okay, okay, great. Um, all right, Greg. So, my name is Grzegorz Kogut. That's, my, that's how we pronounce my Polish name. Everybody calls me Greg. I came to the United States in... 2001. I was uh, 26 already at the time, so I was I came as an adult. I didn't speak English, so that's uh, when I learned uh, the language here after I came. And the mice that played the lead guitar, back vocals. I used to play in a few bands back in Poland, like Epitome, Grindcore band, uh, Cremasters, like crossover, thrash, heavy, uh, all the joke band. Uh, here I played. I started first with Go to Mantis. That's how I ended up in Bronx uh, seeing. And after playing two years with them, uh, I moved on. I played Feral with uh, uh, Mel, actually. Uh, I was starting another band, but didn't pan out. I did my solo project, meanwhile. It's called, it's called uh, Cross Up Yours. So I have one EP on the solo project with Kevin Talley on the drums and me doing everything else. And of course, Demise. I joined the band in 2010, I think. Yeah, and, and since then, I'm uh, this. Great. Thank you, Greg. All right, Mel. Yes, uh, my name is Mel M. O'Reilly. Uh, I'm originally from uh, Harlem, Washington Heights area. I grew up in Washington Heights, Harlem, you know, a little, little bit of Long Island. Uh, you know, I'm the vocalist for Demise. Uh, I've been in also other bands such as uh, Shaquan. I've been in a band called Feral and, uh, and Demise. And, uh, you know, definitely an experience. And, uh, you know, definitely uh, it was it was something growing up in New York. Like growing up in, in Harlem, I had a whole bunch of, uh, it was mainly hip hop uh, type of area. You know, everybody was into hip hop and R&B, everything like that. So me listening to metal was like pretty much an oddity. I was the oddity on the block. Everybody's wearing like, Carl Kanai and Fubu and stuff like that. I'm walking around with like suffocation, cannibal <laughs> corpse. You know, I, I would, I would just, I was that dude. You know, I was yeah. that dude back in the day. Yeah. But yeah, honestly, my experience is when trading for the world. Thank you, Mel. Okay, so why, why don't each of you talk a little bit more about your um, family history and background? Whatever you know, whatever your parents told you. Um, Gio, if, you, if your family talked much about what life was like for them in the Dominican Republic, you can talk about that. Yeah, go ahead. Well, my parents are uh, both Dominicans. Uh, they grew up in the Trujillo era. That was like, he liked to call it like the Dominican Hitler. Uh huh. Where if you foulmouth him and somebody hears you, they'll kill you. Yep. My father, well, one of the five people that killed Trujillo was my father's uncle. Wow. You can look it up. Wow. <laughs> CIA hired, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And the family did great. So he, my father used to tell me a story where. They put him in a room like a hallway, standing yeah. up with water dripping on the head, and then they'll bring up one out, and when you hear screams, holy shit! I seen videos of a child like VHS of Trujillo stuff for like torture, like nails being pulled with pliers, pulled full of uh, full of piranhas and stuff like that. And wow! Like, I didn't get it. I was too young. Yeah. And um, you know, then that happened. Then Rafi Trujillo, Trujillo's son. When they were gonna execute my father and a couple of the people, they he he ran away to Spain. Wow, that's what saved my father. Wow, they let him go. I mean, I wish I wish he was here to so we could do a personal thing with him because he would tell you a lot of stuff. Um, I still got the VHS of all the stuff that happened back then. Wow, he could have gotten killed for that. Back is then. is he still alive? No, he passed away. Oh man, twenty forty. Wow. So uh, yeah, I mean, then. Uh, I grew up in a military family, obviously, and my mom was mostly here in the United States. 
she travels back and forth with my sister. I have a younger brother. Um, then, and my father decided to send us here for a better future, you know. And um, in 1985, I was nine years old. We walk us to the airport. We end up being in America, in my mom's aunt's house, the Grinch. We lived in a in one of her rooms was the size of a closet. Wow. My sister, my brother, eating uh, kaboom. Remember kaboom? Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> and fake of cocoa puff and all the uh -huh. fake cereals you could find. But yep. to us, that was a treat. <laughs> Growing up, um, watching Voltron, Spectre Gadget, uh -huh. Clip, that's how I learned English. I missed two years of school because I know, I was, you know, I didn't know English, so. Sure. Um, then we moved from that was, we used to live in the village, uh, but maybe like three blocks away from Q. Oh, That's okay, okay. My, aunt, my mom's aunt used to live. That's where so she lived. We left that place and uh, we moved to 166 in Ottawa, in uh, Manhattan, over there. Two blocks from the Presbyterian Hospital. Okay, yeah. The, the, the building was a crackhead, right? Oh my God, fire everywhere, shooting, killing, robbery. Then 1988, we moved to the Bronx. Okay, what neighborhood did you move to in the Bronx? Uh, talking about jumping from the fire from the frying pan to the fire, we moved to Crescent, one eighty eight. Yeah, let's say let's say put it this way: the first day I walked into that block, it was summer, a car backfire, I threw myself in the floor, <laughs> and everybody's looking at me like, "What the hell?" Yeah. <laughs> but you know the news, you watch the Bronx this, Bronx that. I'm like, I don't get killed. Oh my god! Oh my god! So ever since we moved there, we got Crescent. But previous to that, we did live in Jersey for a couple of years, uh, for a year. Okay, yeah. And then, then the Bronx. And we've been here ever since. How, how old were you when you moved to the Bronx? Probably like 11, 12. 11, 12. Like 13. And do you want to talk some more about, um, uh, uh, I guess, your memories in the Dominican Republic, whatever you might remember? Um, it, my childhood was great. I miss it. Yeah. I, I still have a house over there, but... It's just not the same. Yeah. Uh, as you get older, things changes. Yeah. Politics. If you look at a video from Brazil, Brazil is a beautiful country, but if you see how they, you know, how the ghetto is getting, that's a my neighborhood is getting now. I see. I see. You don't see kids playing outside anymore. Here in New York. Yeah, I know. Right in New York, now. And um, uh, you know, I used to go to my grandma's house in the countryside and. The reason we ended up going coming to New York is because I was getting into a lot of trouble. Because over there, we carry weapons. And yeah. I, man, this is funny. It's not, it's not funny. I got shot in my leg, Ooh, trespassing, damn. stealing a mango. Oh, God. <laughs> but I, it's a normal thing. It's yeah, a mango, sure. You grab it. But sure. I guess they thought I was a thief or something. They shot yeah. me. I ran, jumped over through the far wires. I ran. I was running in the middle, walking in the middle of the gravel road. And I went like this, and I see my sandal. Full of blood on there, what the hell? And I put my hand in my pinky when he oh. into the hole. Oh. And that's when my leg went up. Whoop. And I'm like, Wah. <laughs> Oh my God. And somebody picked me up, took me. My father went to the guy, the neighbor, and pistol with the guy for doing that. Yep. And that's how my father was. But, and that was it. And then he said, the following year in New York, you get into much trouble. Yeah. And I ended up in the worst place. <laughs> Preston. Wow. Uh, and what, what school did you go to when, when you moved to Creston? I went to IS 115. Okay. Where's that at? Okay. I'm okay. a block from 184. Like I was yeah. weird. It's right there. Yeah. I was, uh, but before that in Manhattan, I was going to uh, PS 143. Okay. Okay. And every day was a fight. Like I see. Like a group of people that used to pick up me, try to steal my stuff. And since I'm in the military, my father told me not to get in trouble, and so I didn't react. Yeah. And so I went home with a black eye, and my father just walked me to school the following day and said, who hit you? Him? Go fight all over. Yeah. <laughs> That's how my father was. Yeah, and sure. I had to fight. Sure. It doesn't matter if I lose or win, but just you gotta let stand up for yourself, yeah. Right. And after that, we just, I survived, and they sent me here to the Bronx, and I just wanted to. And, and how was that? What was your experience It was calm, like it was nice, until graduation, where I had fight this other dude that was a bully yeah and i had enough yeah and the fight was like one of those fights that you wish somebody stopped it stop it but everybody just eating popcorn watching the fight including <laughs> the cops oh my god yep and i'm like somebody <laughs> 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 you know and that was my graduation bound yeah 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 
And I would say, I mean, it's, after a while, they, I guess it got bored. So I've been pressing it. Um, and what, what kinds of music do you remember hearing either in your house or in the neighborhood when you were growing up? And that could be, you know, in the DR, in Manhattan, in the Bronx. You can talk about all of that. In DR, it was more of my father, he tracks and stuff like that. Sonora Matancera, which is, you know, like classical. Yeah. Uh, bolero. Sure. Spanish music. And, you know, once you got the Teleclub, which is like the ghetto MTV. Yeah. You start watching, uh, like, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Cindy Lauper. Oh, Cindy Lauper, yeah. You know what the hell she was saying, but we got, <laughs> you, know, you saw Mick Jagger singing something there and, you know, and stuff like that. Then we moved to the Bronx, uh, came from America. I was more into like the ventures. Okay, yeah. Classical music and stuff like that. And also, I wasn't really much into Spanish music. Yeah. I don't, I don't dance, even if I like to dance on it. So then um, listening to rap, slick rig, I like them. You know, sure. I grew up in that environment and. When I started skateboarding, that's when my friend gave me an Iron Maiden tape. Oh, how old were you when you started skateboarding? I was Around. Or I, I guess... Almost like a year after we filmed, so probably 13. Okay, okay. I, I was going to, uh, to school already, so... Yeah, so Iron Maiden, Merciful Fate, Ugly Kid Joe, and Metallica. I don't know which channel, but... Um, but I know we used to have that boom back playing and... Then, Skateboarding and stuff like that, and that's what we do. Where where would you skate? Right there in Crestland, and then we used to go to the Brooklyn Banks, and then go to Malala, Malala Park, and skate there, or just cruise, go to Manhattan, and yeah, go to the Village and skate in the Thompson Square Park, and yeah, until the cops chase you around. Do you do you remember um, what it was like when you first heard Iron Maiden and and other you know the first metal albums you heard? What what were your impressions? To me, it was like electric. Yeah. Like, I didn't get it, but the sound attracted me. Yeah. You know, like, it was just like, especially when you're driving or writing something, you put that type of metal, you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. Yeah, for it sure. It doesn't matter. You know, like, that's it. I'm jumping over the, wheel, the, 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 you know, the waterfall, whatever. And, yeah. You know, but it just boosts you up. It answers you up. It does. And it makes you do stupid things. <laughs> <laughs> but here we are. I'm still alive, so I'm good. Um, before we get, you know, further down the the musical road, which we we will definitely in a second, um, talk a little bit about like food you remember um, growing up. You mentioned the the cereal already, but uh, but other food in your house or outside your house that you remember eating. And yeah, it was just the basic the flag, you know, meat, rice, beans, sure. plantains. Uh, America, it was just uh, like. Uh, Wonderland, like, like Willy Wonka, you know, so everything was, uh, so like, we go to the supermarket and we're like, it's like going to a museum, watching all these things that we only saw on TV. Yeah, know? sure. But here, it's, it's basically the same tradition. Yep. And everything else is kind of like, was like a, like a treat. Yeah, sure. Because we didn't have much. Sure, so sure. When my mom used to come in, be like, da boom, <laughs> you know, we, forget about it. Playing Monopoly in the little room, you know. Yeah. That was it, but it's basically the same flag, rice, bean, and plantain. Sure, and sure, sure. Sure. Um, all right. We'll, we'll come back to you, Gio, and, and keep tracing out your musical journey, but Greg, why don't you talk some about your um, family history, whatever you might know about it, um, and some of your early life some, and then we'll, we'll keep it forward with your life, too. So, I was born in Poland, uh, uh, 1975, east uh, south of Poland, by the city of Rzeszów. We we live. Uh, the family house is still there. Uh, my family lives still there. Uh, it's in Bratkowice. That's the name of the village. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's where I lived. Uh, that's where I grew up. Uh, it was still uh, communist times when when I was born and I lived until uh, 80, 81 when they started uh, the transformation. So, so so there was nothing in the stores. We would go to the store, there would be literally nothing. Just vinegar, bottles, and that's it. So when you wanted to, to get anything, there were certain times that they were bringing everything to the shelf. Like, let's say Fridays, uh, 3 p.m., they, they bring meat. Yeah. The line is there since the morning. So for that, my mom would take me to the city. She would, uh, we would, she would put me in the line, like at 7 a.m., let's say. 
she was started running to see the doing errands. I would be the, the like five year old kid keeping the the line. She's like, don't let anybody in the front of you. And, and you know, there will be people trying to. Oh, I spoke to your mom, uh, but but people behind me. No, she didn't. <laughs> you know, everybody was looking up. Sure, sure. So 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 by the time you know before three, she would come and I was, I was going by between check on me and by three they they throw the meat. <laughs> and you had the, those uh, those cars and those tickets. How much uh, you were allowed to buy? Sure, that was uh, government regulated too. So they couldn't just buy. It. And everybody had money, but there was nothing to 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 buy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with the money, so so you had to those like bartering. This guy has the pigs, so you sell to his friends meat or whatever. You would uh, go around like that, like this guy, because. There would be uh, like uh, building sites, construction sites, the government, of course, operated people that would work there. They would uh, like steal certain parts. They would drive the the truck at night. Sure. And that's how my dad got uh, radiators for his house. Uh -huh. They would drive at night and see which of the house is in construction. So under construction, so they would knock in the door. We have radiators. Need any? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the neighbor for more money, and and, 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 and I love that. You know, the house so nobody can see, and, and, and so on. So, so yeah. that's how they were uh, getting stuff. And uh, yeah, I was going to school there. Then uh, uh, high school, I went in the city already. I was driving the bus every day. Then uh, I went to, to I guess university you could call it. It's a polytechnic of Rzeszów. Okay. Yeah. So I graduated that as an engineer. I worked as an engineer for a few years. I was a machine designer, CNC programmer, and so on. So, so I would work that. I, would, I moved to Warsaw. It's, uh, my last uh, few years in Poland, I was looking for better opportunities, but I still wasn't like uh, what I was expecting. But I always was, you know. Fascinated with America, movies, Easy Rider, uh, all the stuff. You know, my uncles. I, I always was fascinated with uh, motorcycles. So my uncle, my dad's brother, died on the motorcycle. That's mm -hmm. why my dad had a motorcycle. That's why I had hard time to get one. Yeah. But that's because it's worried about me. Of course. But uh, I remember, like, with memories, I would they would come visit the bike would be parked outside, they would put me on them, I would check my legs, how much I'm from the ground so I can actually sit and, and ride. I was like three, five, six. So all that stuff, yeah. And uh, that like set me up for being a biker as well. Wow. <laughs> uh, what what kind of music did your family listen to or, or you know, friends? Uh, my neighbors? family didn't really like listen like recordings. Whatever was on the TV, we only had two channels on TV back in Poland back then. So it was either channel number one or channel number two. Okay. We didn't really have uh, names. There's one and two. Sure. Uh, so so they would have some like uh, shows programs with, with, with like Polish music. So yeah. those were all like popular music. That was not really a distinction. Like like it, that was like. Uh, some uh, program about uh, like a list of best-selling hits or whatever. They would sure. play them and be like, "Oh, this is what are they playing now? What people listen to now?" Yeah. Then I remember I was like, "I was attracted to metal because like this band Europe, the can final countdown song." I'm like, "Whoa, <laughs> those guys are <laughs> headbanging!" <laughs> and like they have one hair kind of like, "Wow." I always, uh, because I had short hair as a boy and my sisters had a little longer hair, so I, and the younger sisters, I always made them <laughs> <laughs> headbang wash. And then, and then like, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's how it started, I guess. And then I started, like, when I went to high school, because in my village there was like, like two metal heads. Okay. There was 4,000 population. Yeah. So, and. I didn't, didn't even know them because there were like three uh, th uh, three schools. Yeah. So 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 they were going to the other ones. So so I didn't even have anybody to ask for bands or talk to. There was no internet. Uh, radio wouldn't ever play stuff like that. Yeah, sure. 
for my money from my first communion, I bought uh, a, a tape uh, cassette player. Yeah. Because when I was three, I was born, but it had recording. So whenever I saw something I liked on TV, everybody quiet because there was no cables and so on. So I would put it next to TV. Who opened the door? You got my song. <laughs> so this, this kind of stuff. Yeah, well, later I went to the high school and I started like, going to the record stores and, and started buying, uh, asking other people, because there were already metalheads in my class, so talking to them. So that was about 15, started discovering metal, like really. Oh, okay, and what, what year was that? Let's see, you said you were born in 1970. Uh, like 90s. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so Suffocation, from yep. the album, yep. Napalm Death. All those uh, emulation. Wow. Emulation. Okay. Yeah. So, so all those like I did. I had no idea I'm gonna end up in New York with like some occasion emulation. Yeah. It's yeah. From here, right? Yeah. But that was like like I was asking. It was the most ex extreme metal there is. They were telling me this band, this band. I'm going to, to to the store. Can I get this tape? And back in the day, we thought they were like uh, legal copies. Yeah. Sure. They were not. <laughs> They were like uh, 12, 13 is what Yeah. Polish currency. And then they were just blasting them like without paying copyrights. Uh, yeah. And then same with video, uh, like uh, VHS, uh, movies, uh, rentals, everything was uh, illegal <laughs> as, as copyright wise. <laughs> then when they finally figured that out, started cracking them all down and closing all the. the yeah, but, but but the stores uh, started switching. So so I, I remember first uh, like com like licensed uh, uh, cassette I got was a uh, deaf human album. Uh, and and we we're like, why is it dirty? What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> it's so expensive, right? Oh, well, it's legal. So what about those? They are not legal. <laughs> well, I thought that it was like wow, it was nice cover, everything. It was just not like yeah. like simple print. Like they would just blast uh, them. Uh, Mass production in some, I don't know, uh, barn house. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, 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 that's, yeah. Did, did you um, get exposed to any, like, Polish underground metal at that point? Uh, not, not back then. Not back, not then. back Later, then. Later. Like, like, because I was always, like, uh, listening to those extreme bands. Yeah. So, so there were not that much of them. That's back, right. Back then, yeah, they were like forming later. Yeah, sure. So yeah, so so later I had to do my homework to get back to it and and, and get familiar. So I don't sound stupid when I talk to other people. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll 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 circle back around to, to Geo and ask more of this in a second too. But um, since we're with you right now. Did you consider playing any instruments at this point? Had you started playing any instruments? Yeah, I considered playing electric guitar. I, I'm like watching those, you know, pop, pop music in Poland, like this middle-aged guy singing like <laughs> some song with, with his, I don't know, flowers in the background. And, and, yeah. and, 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 and I'm like, wow, the electric guitar. So I asked me my uncles this and that. They're like, nobody plays anything. So, so. So, so finally my mom, I was 10 or something, my mom signed me up for a class for mandolin. Uh, because okay. then we didn't have instruments, whatever school had. Sure. We could uh, <laughs> request uh, like to, to like kind of rent it, so we had it at home for like a year or whatever period of time you were uh, going to those uh, outside school classes. Yeah. So I started mandolin, then mom bought me guitar and signed me up for another class like that for one year for, for, for acoustic guitar. Okay. And then I, I, I got kind of bored, so I stopped. I was still uh, 13, 14, I believe. And then when I started to listen to metal, I started revisiting. I got bass guitar, started like, trying it out. Finally got my electric guitar, I started getting tabs. Uh, Learning how to play metal. Wow. Um, just, just as as a an aside question, have have you ever considered bringing uh, or have you ever brought mandolin to uh, uh, to demise or any other? No, I didn't know that, that, that tremolo picking. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Is, yeah, the tremolo picking. The same. Yeah, 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 yeah. From mandolin. <laughs> <laughs> so in a way. <laughs> in a way. <laughs> Oh. Place in the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so, so I, I, I have a great like sentiment to that instrument. I, 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 there was time I wanted to have just one just to hang on the wall, but I guess I guess that faded away. Desire. Um. So so we'll, I'll I'll come back to you in a second, Greg. Um. But Mel, let's hear about your family history and background. Um. And then we'll work our way forward with you too. Okay. So um, my mother is born here in um, New York City. She was born in Harlem, okay. and my dad was born in Trinidad. And okay. He moved to the United States in 1962 oh, when he was 11 years okay. old, and. Uh, so, so like my mother and my father met while they were in high school, so many moons ago. Okay. And uh, don't 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 tell my mom that. <laughs> but yeah, like so, so yeah, so you know, like they lived they lived there. They lived in uh, in the Heights. They lived in the Bronx, and then they moved back to the Heights, and that's where I was born. Okay. And um, I have uh, I have two sisters, and I have a little brother, and uh, you know we we moved to uh, moved to Harlem. When I was five years old, and we went to projects, Franklin projects. Yeah, you know, and it's like you know, it was cool over there. It was, you know, you had some documents that acted up over there, and everything like that. You know, I learned the ancient art of minding your own business. <laughs> so, like, you know, that's how I I was able to get through and get through just fine. Yeah, but yeah, it was like you know, over there it was you know, I had a good childhood. You know, it was, you know playing tag, you know, playing Chris Columbus black court, you know, Lodi tops. Uh, and basketball, like, you know, I grew to love basketball a great deal. Yeah. So it was like, you know, I love studying basketball. I love playing basketball. I love watching basketball. So, it was, you know, it was something that I did a great deal of. Yes. And, uh, you know, and like, you know, besides that, you know, we're just that, you know, I wasn't, you know, I was kind of like deemed the, you know, the different kid. I was always, there was always something different about me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but everybody, you know, everybody be like, you know, like playing at Barbies and stuff like that, you know, and you know playing football. I'm I'm over. There, I'm reading the Guinness World Book of Records. You know, I, mean, I was, <laughs> you know, I was a your know, average kid from Harlem. You know, what I mean? yeah, yeah, sure. So, 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 yeah, you know, we're just that. You know, like growing up, I know that. You know, you know, being that I was, you know, I had different tastes, and everything like that. Different tastes in music, different tastes in food, different tastes in how I like to spend my time, and everything like that. You know, it was like, I guess, like my parents, like, you know, they never really suppressed me. From being like you know, from being myself, I think they kind of applauded it a little bit. I wow. think that some of it kind of got on my mother's nerves too, because like you know, you know, I was like you know, you know why can't you listen to hip hop like everybody else? <laughs> you know, <I'm> like, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> just kidding, mom. But yeah, like you know, it was you know, it was definitely uh, you know, I was uh, I, you know, I was you know, I was different. They told me to cultivate my you know what I like, everything I like, carve a path for myself and everything. So. Wow, you know it, it was cool, and you know I went I went to high school, and uh, I went to junior Richard high school and everything, and you know they had a nice little crew called the Deceps back in the day, so it was like you know it, it was like they got, they made it rough everything like that, but it was like you know I'm glad that I got out of school without having a scar on my face. Yeah, because it absolutely. was like I, I think I kind of learned uh, interpersonal skills in uh, high school, like learned how to like learn how to deal with people and everything like that. So you know you know. I so it was rough because I like, remember I'm the different kid, so it's like when you're different, you have a lot of people that always have something to say because yep. they want they want to like they want to feel like they fit in and you know and be like that cool person, and even if that means not the person that's like doing something different yep. or not the run of the mill, you know, then that's what yes, that's what like built their quote unquote self worth. Uh -huh. So you know it was you know so you know I, I just I just had to rise about that and everything and um yeah. It, yeah, it was, you know, it, it was a fun time, though. It was like, even though you, know, you had all, like, the people that had jokes and trying to pick up and everything like that, it was a fun time, you know. It was a fun time, you know, growing up. I, like, the 80s and 90s, I think for the people that didn't grow up at that point, you know, I, I kind of feel for them in a sense because, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it, was, it was just a fun era, you know what I mean? It was a fun era, like, you know, for, like, basically for, like, you know, you know, entertainment and everything like that and styles and everything. You That's know, right. It, you know, it was... It was a fun time. It was a lot of fun. So it was like, you know, just growing up, uh, I remember one of my earliest memories was growing up, you know, like I remember we was at my grandfather's house. We were at my grandfather's house for a little while. I was about four years old. That's when MTV came out. So my sister was older than me by two and a half years. Like she would grab me in a room and like we sat at my grandfather's uh, room 
because you know that one had cable. You know, we was watching, and like we watch videos and everything like that. So, you know, my sister would go away play with her dolls and stuff like that. And you know, I'm four years off so sitting there. You know, I don't know what Trevor will turn to. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know if I'll turn to child. That, that's what's on. I think that's right. That was what I was watching. So, I would just like, I would, I would just watch. I would just like watch all these MTV videos and like absorb all like the videos that's being played, like. The Beatles video killed the radio star. Uh-huh. You know, like what else? Eddie Grant, Electric Avenue, Ross Stewart, Young Turks. Wow. You know, like all that stuff. I was all that was being implanted in my head. You know, as as a, as a kid. So that's like right then and there. That's what I was like. Okay, you know, music is my thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Music and wrestling. Yeah. And and what what kinds of music did you hear in your household? Like, what kinds of music were your your parents into? Uh, my mom, my mom was into the Motown. Okay, she was yeah. Really into the Motown, you know. Growing up, it was like you know, like the general rule of my household, we had to know how Smokey Robinson's voice sounded. Like. <laughs> that was that was the thing. Like we, we had to we had to know Smokey. That was like the criteria of being in my home. Yeah, yeah. So it was like you know, when she listened to a lot of Motown, everything like that. Watch, listen to a lot of Michael Jackson, like Marvin Gaye. It's funny, like my my mom's playing this album in the house. I'm five years old. I don't know nothing about sexual healing, but <laughs> that, that's what she's playing. And I'm just like, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, yeah, sexual healing, baby. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> so, so, that's so, yeah, funny. So, so, yeah, so, you know, we grew up on Motown, everything like that. I grew up on um, R&B, you know, uh-huh. really big into the R&B stuff. And then my older sister, she was really into the R&B and everything like that. She's yeah. like an R&B car and store. And everything, so they, you know, they was listen, you know, they were listening to that stuff. Um, you know, my dad, you know, my dad, you know, he's listening to all types of stuff. He liked to listen to like Funkadelic. Okay, yeah, you know, yeah, he liked yeah. to listen to, uh, you know, he listened to Bob Marley, sure, Peter Tosh. Like he listened to all this stuff, but also he, you know, he was pretty eclectic too. He, he listened to like you know to George Clay, but he also like when I found this out about my dad, I was like, okay, that's probably where I got it from. You know, he would he would listen to Iron Butterfly, he listen to Sabbath, oh, and stuff okay. like that, you know. He listened to all that stuff, you know, of, of course, the Calypso, uh-huh. you know, uh-huh. Trinidadian got to have the Calypso, got to have the Soka, uh-huh. and stuff like that, you know, the Denny Brown, reggae, yeah. you know, he was listening to all that stuff, and, you know, you know, you know I got a little, like, everything that they was to, like, the, the R&B, the, the Calypso, Soka, you know, even, like, you know, they, you know, my sister was big into hip-hop, too, Yeah, and some of that leaked into me, too. Sure, so, sure. But it was, it was funny, like, my, how I got into metal, it was, like, the funniest thing ever, like, I remember, like, you know, my mom used to send us to bed at eight o'clock when, when I was like, when I was like five, six old. So we wouldn't go to bed. I would just be looking out the window, just looking at Yankee Stadium across the water, <laughs> looking at the cars passing by, and you know. But like, it was funny. It was a funny memory. I remember, like, I remember hearing the song "Rock Box" from Run DMC. I listened to "Rock Box," and I remember at the same time I listened to "Rock Box," you know, it was on the radio. You had like this guy was like running from the cops, and like he had he had like he had the style like the Run DMC style with shoes without the laces. Yeah, yeah. He's running from the cops. He runs out of his shoes, going back to get the shoes to get squad to get arrested. Oh, and all damn. this is for rock box playing. <laughs> so I was so it was like that video was actually my, I mean, that's all was actually in my mind. They're like I like the guitar sound. So I was like okay, I got I got to figure out you know listen to some more stuff with these guitar sounds. So like I would listen to you know that's why I was getting to Van Halen. Uh-huh. Motley Crue, Rat, who else? Quiet Riot. Uh-huh. I was getting into Def Leppard. You know, I was getting, I was getting into like all the bands back then. And it was like I was into rock. So I was basically into rock since I was like seven years old. So, seven uh-huh. years old. so then well, like, taste kinda of got a little bit heavier a few years later, man, like, you know, like I remember I, I don't know, like I was, you know, I I like to listen to like rock, but I also like to listen to like some hip hop and everything like that. Yeah, so sure. So it was like, you know, I remember listening to, like, Anthrax's I'm the Man. Yep. I listen to Anthrax's I'm the Man. I'm like, oh, wow, this sounds pretty cool, man. So I'm like, I'm thinking that Anthrax is a rap metal band. Yeah, sure, sure. So I go to HMV, and I'm looking for so I get the Among the Living tape. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I put it in, and I listen to it, and we're just like, the seas, the seas, you ain't not the seas. Like, it was yeah. like. It was like the like it just it was heavy. It was like the rush. It wasn't like it was like nonstop, like uh-huh. relentless. Yeah, yeah, it was like relentless. It was vicious. I was like, yo, this right here is the shit right here. Yep. I was like, yo, this. I was like, wow, it blew me away. 
So that was like, okay. I got a far more band that was that's in the same vein. As yeah. Anthrax. So then you know I got you know listen to Slay. I got to Slay like listen. Somehow I found WSOU by accident. Oh. And, oh, and then all of a sudden like you got Slayer, you had Megadeth, you had uh-huh. Nuclear Soul, you had all these like thrash bands playing like this heavy sound. It's like relentless style. Yeah. And I got more into it. I was like, yo, this is like, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm listening to all this stuff and everything. And I was, you know, it's a thrash. I, I just really, I fell into the whole thing. I just started wearing the shirts. I saw, I started wearing the shirts. I started like going to the shows and everything like that. And then like, you know, all of a sudden, I'm, I remember watching Headbangers Fall and Mass Appeal Madness from Napalm Death uh-huh. was on. And I'm like, yo, this dude has the craziest voice ever. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this dude, yo, like this guy, like it was, was kind of like a volcano going off in my head. Yeah, as he's like still saying like the vocals, and everything like that. So it was, uh, I was like, okay, so you know, you know, my mom gave me about she gave me like eight dollars, like that, you know, that next week, and I went to HMV and I bought Napalm Death. Uh, I bought the Death Bomb Manipulation. Wow tape and everything like that so i'll listen to that i'm like yo this it's like it's kind of like everything's going more than chains everything like, I'm, I'm like really get into it and then all of a sudden i buy the napalm that harmony corruption album then all of a sudden like i you know i remember at that time like right when i bought that tape it was a it was a magazine like a magazine they were talking about like death metal and grindcore yeah yeah so i saw a cannibal corpse i'm like oh. okay this sounds cannibal corpse this sounds pretty interesting it's like and Chris Barnes was talking about, like, yeah, like, I think lyrics are kind of funny. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I want to see what this guy's about. So yeah, sure. I bought the I bought the Butch of That Birth Tape. Oh, man, my virgin ears, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the, what the hell? Like, you talking about, you know, Sami and all stuff? I'm like, yo, this is, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fucking cool, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this is cool. So, <laughs> so you know, I, so I, you know, I started gravitating, gravitating more towards that and everything like that. And that's where... So let's you know, listen to all types of death metal, everything like that. So it's like, yeah, you know, I've been, I've, I've been into rock and then metal, like anything like you know, where it's intense music, for you know, for basically like oh, four fifths of my life. Yeah, four fifths of your life. Wow. Yeah. Um. Now, when you started to get into death metal, you know, uh, Napalm Death and then Cannibal Corpse and all. Uh-huh. Uh, where? How old were you? Were you in junior high or high school? I was in junior high. In junior high. Okay. Junior wow. High. Wow. Wow. Um, uh-huh. So, so talk uh, a little bit about um, your junior high experience, and you know, were were there other kids who were into the kind of music you were into, and um, and all of that a little bit? Oh no, I was the oddity man. Like, you were the oddity. I, okay. You know, I was. I was listening to you no. Know, you know, listen to the thrash and a little bit of death and everything like that. And it's like, you know, everybody was into the R and B. They was into the hip hop. They was uh-huh. into like you know, house, regular house music. House, yeah, house, yep. house music definitely. They was into the freestyle. Uh-huh. You know, it was like all that was like playing around, stuff like that. And he goes little on me with a Slayer shirt coming to school. <laughs> and they're like, just like you're doing the hell. I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, who made you a guy, yo? And it was like, you know, they, you know, we're just like, you know, just going to school. I was, you know, a lot of people, they they always talk about me and stuff like that, you know, because I was into, it was like, yeah, he put his dog in a microwave. <laughs> like, they, they, they were saying, like, there was stuff like that. And, like, and, you know, just, you know, you know, growing up, like, you know, and, like, going to school and everything like that, we're just like, you know, I always heard people, like, talking stuff about me. There was a big rumor stuff and everything like that. And like it, it was funny because like even my school was like I was going to a performance art a performance art school and everything yeah, like that. Yeah. And I felt like that you know that's where we were trying to find like you know we you know we had Savion Glover that went to the school and everything like that. We had Miriam Day, uh-huh. you know, a friend of my sister's who was like an actress and everything. You know, we had some people that like that that was actually in like movies and 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 shows and everything like that that acted. So it was like you know I think they were looking for like the next person that was like the people that was going to be like you know. Yeah. Among that category, along that echelon, and like me, like they they were looking at me. I was just like I was kind of anti that, so I was usually I'm like used to being like the anti person, you yeah. know, in the area. It was like I, I just had a total reverse mentality, and I guess like they couldn't really hack it or whatever. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, it was like you know, like it was it was kind of cool being different because it was like nobody's like me. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, would would you go to to performance art school? Were you were you you know, going specifically for like 
music or or drama? Did you have to pick like a no, concentration no, we, or something like no, that? We, we did all the we had we all did music classes. We did oh, okay. uh, drama classes. We did ballet dance classes and stuff wow. like that. And it was like, you know, the drama was cool, everything like that. And music, the music was kind of fun. But like that ballet shit, I wasn't feeling. I wasn't feeling that. Was like, I was like, you know, I, I tried to like do plies and all that stuff. Like, yeah. But, so so there, there weren't any kids who were into to metal there either, huh? No, it was just one kid. It was hilarious. Like, yeah. my, like my, my final year in, uh, in, in uh, junior high school, you know, it was this kid. His name was Victor. Yeah, and it was like it was like it was like I was always saying, like yeah you got an anthrax shirt on like, yeah you got a Megadeth shirt like it was, like but he was he was a couple of grades younger than me so you know we were talking everything like that he would tell me that like his brother was huge into metal yeah and then like it was about time like trade trading trade tape trading was like it was like the thing so it's like you know I would I would try to like take like trade tapes and stuff like that with them and, with, and like with his brother like just like so I could like see like if I can find something new from there and uh, I would get you know. And show him something new, everything like that. But it was crazy. Every tape I was having, he like knew everything. He had the tapes, so it was wow. like it was just like him just lending me the tapes, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. So you know, it was, you know, it was a little different and everything like that. But you know, it was funny. I remember my Spanish teacher was like, "She's Chappelle, like, let, let, let me talk to you. Sit down, please. Now, you need to tell me, are you on any drugs?" And I'm like. <laughs> And it was Dr. Eddie, like, no, Dr. Eddie, I'm not, I'm not any drugs. Because you wear crazy shirts like that, and that's not normal. I'm like, I'm like, what, what is normal? <laughs> <laughs> and she, she, was like, she was like, yeah, you don't dress like the other kids, and, you know, listen to the same music the other kids listen to. So I just want to wear your health. I'm like, are you, are you happy at home? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine, okay? <laughs> but that, that, it was funny. It was like you know, people always had like questions like that. You know, in junior high school, even in high school, they always had you know interesting, you know, interesting like but weird questions about uh -huh. you know what I listen to. Now, where would you get your music? You, men you mentioned one store a couple times already. Is that the only store you you go to, or you, would you go to other stores around New York to get your music? Okay, you know, like younger, I was going to like H M V. When uh -huh. H M V, I would go to Tower Records because. Tower Records, like, HMV, everything was like, when it was nine ninety nine. dollars Tower Records was nine forty four. So I saved a few cents so I could get myself some, like, some candy or something. Yeah, yeah, sure, so, sure. So, yeah, so, like, you know, I'll go to Tower Records, I'll go to Coconuts, I'll go to The Winds, and then, like, as I got older, I started, like, getting into, like, the undergrounds, I uh -huh. started seeping into, like, the, the crevices of the sea. Yeah. I would go to a spot called Bleaker Bobs. Bleaker Bobs, for sure, for sure. I would go Bleaker Bobs. That's where I get my t-shirts. Uh-huh. I'll get my obscure tapes. And demos, it's and VHS tapes, everything like that. Yeah, yeah. Venture CDs, and you know, those um, are my spots. Do you remember the first show you went to? I mean, it does, doesn't have to be, you know, like an underground show. Maybe it was an arena show or something. But what was the first show you went to? The first show I went to, the first show I went to was the uh, which one? Clash of the Titans. Oh, you went to Clash of the Titans. That was oh, the first show I went to. Okay, it was what is Slayer, Anthrax, Anthrax Mega Megadeth, um, and. What I, I guess, yeah, 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 wow, yeah, wow. My first show, yeah, I, 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 it was crazy. I was, I, my mind was blown. I was just like, wow, I'm in the middle of it all. Who, who'd you go with? Did you go with your dad or, or by yourself? How, how old were you at this time? I was about 14. I went by myself. Okay, you went by yourself. Okay, got you. Okay, yeah. Talk, yeah. talk, talk more about it. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. I think the Alex Machines, like, somebody threw an F-A-D-U on stage when they were playing. It was, it was crazy. Right. And then, like, there yeah, was, you know, there yeah, was, you know, Ed Rax was playing. They, like, they did their stuff. And, you know, yeah, like, Public Enemy come on stage. And they were uh -huh. bring the noise and everything. You know, that was fun. And then, like, Slay, like, Slay came on. People just, like, lost it. Like, you see, like, chairs. Like, I don't know how they break the chair. They, they throw in chairs. Because they were, like, bolt. Weren't they bolted They were bolted right, yeah, yeah. But somehow they would get the chairs to throw it out. And they're, like... Like one person I knew, like tried to try to throw a chair, and he got caught up. They like they took him. They almost arrested him, and and they come come to find out. Like I see him after the show, and he's like, "Yeah, you know they, you know." I told him, I told him a story that like you know, I'm from like Middletown, New York, and I can't go back because my boss gonna my boss gonna kill me and blah blah blah. If you get if I get in trouble like from here, and they never they let me go to a show again. So. So yeah, it was, that was the experience. Wow. Um, and then what about your first, like, more underground show in, in New York? How old were you and, and which one was it? First underground remember? show? I, I don't think, 
I guess we kind of underground to a certain extent. I guess maybe the um, underground show, probably uh, Brutal Truth. Uh, it was Brutal Truth. It was M2 Headline. It was a band from Georgia called Dialist. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so that was my first show. Yeah, not, my, not my first show, but my first like under, underground show. Yeah, yeah, where was that at? What, what, what it was, club this was, was that? at the Grand. Okay. This was at the Grand in 93. In 93. Oh, okay, okay. So, and what, what was that like, um, your oh, experience there? It was crazy. I'm seeing people doing windows in the pit. I'm seeing, like, you know, I was like crazy into the pit, everything like that. You know, I got in everything. I, you know, got a couple of bruises and everything like that. But I just remember it, it was fun. It was it was fun to go fun to go in there and get like you know, get in the pit and everything like that. Just like just wild out and everything. And it, it was it was a lot of fun. So I just uh, you know, it was it was it was something. I, I was I was like so it was, I got like a high off of it. You yeah. know what I mean? Just yeah, like sure. the atmosphere, the, the loud music playing, the brutality. No, excuse me. The people being in the pit and everything like that, just getting dead, you know, dodging punches, taking punches, kicks, and all that stuff. It was, it was, it was just so much fun. Yeah, and I gravitated to it. I was like, okay, I can see myself like doing this for, you know, a long period of time. Yeah, yeah. And at this point, while you were, you know, going to these shows and all, and uh -huh. and still a teenager, were you playing an instrument, or, or had you decided to play an instrument, or have you been vocals the whole time as far as? What yeah. you wanted to do? I played the drums. You played the I played drums. drums. I, I played the drums. I, you know, I like to beat on the drums, everything like that. But I had one with like eggs, you know, with that teen eggs in me. So it was yeah. like beat it out on my drum pad, beat it out on the set, and everything like that. I yeah, see. I, I see. Yeah, I played all the drums and everything, but it's like, you know, like the bands I joined, like, like I, no, I started like most bands. I was like doing vocals, so yeah, you know, because I felt like I was I was better at that. I see. I see, and. Well, but, well I'll, I'll ask you this question. We'll get a little into it, but then we're, sure. we're going to go back to, to, to Geo. Um, okay. But what was the first band you joined, and what year was it? Well, first band I joined? Yeah. My first band was Shaquan. It was Shaquan. It was Shaquan's my first band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I want to ask you a lot more about Shaquan in a little sure. bit. But what year was that around? This, this was in 97. 97. Okay, okay. I see, I see. I see. So you're you're completely deep into the scene by that point. Uh, yeah, pretty anyway. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Scene, yes. I see. I see. Okay, so we'll we'll come back to you, um, Mel Geo. Um, why don't you talk more about uh, getting into metal? Because you left off. You know, you're skating. You're exposed to Iron Maiden and, and some. You know, a, a few other metal bands at that point. But talk more about your development and going down into more extreme forms of metal too. I think uh, high school was like the pivot, pivot point for me because I was into. Classic, more like hair metal stuff. Right? Yeah, the original Pantera back in the eighties. You know? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and stuff like that. But um, I never liked the Cookie Monster voice before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, it takes a while so, for a lot of people. Yeah, because I was like, what the hell? okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody could do that, right? Yeah, yeah. No, nah, everybody could do that. Yep, that's right. <laughs> but, uh, so high school, I went to Roosevelt, the little Roosevelt, right there. Okay. Street for Fordham. Uh huh. Uh, I was the outcast as always, you know, like, um, even the metalheads used to call me Poser. Oh, God, yeah, not yeah, that, yeah, yeah, Not yeah, that yeah, I was yeah, trying yeah. to be like them, it was just because I listened to, like, metal. Yeah. But I was not like them. Yep. And I met a lot of good people there. I met a lot of assholes that are you know, still around, floating around. Like, sure. You flush the toilet and never freaking go down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, like Chucky called me earlier today. He was like, "Yo, oh, no, no, no. all hyped up." He's saying it's Isaac, but yeah, we know we all know him as Chucky. Yeah, high school people know him as Isaac. Uh, I remember going to the music room. That was like the like people nowadays go to the mall hangout. Yep, the music room. So my solo class in uh, uh, Taylor Roosevelt was like the hangout. Oh, okay, I we, see. We could say that now because that school is no longer. You know, that's like right. Charter school now. That's right. That's right. But uh, we used to go there and hang out, play instrument, uh, hang out. I know Chucky one time, Isaac, <laughs> just making sure, you know, Chucky Brown, uh, he brought uh, Rumper Stumper, the movie. Oh, it's like a skinhead movie. Okay, I've never okay. Seen yeah, it, yeah, uh, yeah. So my school, the, the teacher was in there, and he grabbed the TV. And put it. We were watching this only, what the hell? <laughs> for me, it was you. For yeah, the, sure. You know, they, Chucky and all these people have been into the scene longer than I have. Yeah. And plus, I, I was raised in a very strict home, military home, that I didn't grow out anywhere. Yeah. So for me to go somewhere, 
I have to ask somebody to call my parents. And have so an alibi, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I was, I, I see, uh, there was, uh, two brothers. Yeah. Juan Carlos and Alberto. I believe they're Salvadorians. Sorry if I'm, if I'm wrong, but, uh, they used to call them the Culero brothers. Okay. <laughs> if you know what Culero means, you know, I don't, I know they, I don't know if they were, but I'm just saying they were very detriment to me because when we used to all hang out at their house, yeah, they had everything. Uh, that's the first time I saw death. Oh, really? That's the okay. first time I saw mega death. Wow. Like the videos. Not yeah, the sure, sure, sure. And I'm like, what the? You know, and like DSI, uh, freaking a Dead by Dawn and all this stuff. I'm like, I need that. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. It's like, I don't understand it, but I need to. I love the music. I like the, the sound, the tone, this. The vocal was the last thing for me. Yeah, sure, sure. So I could buy an album just because of one note. Yeah. That's how it was. Wow. That's how it went. And they started dubbing me tapes and stuff like that. And I went home and my father used to be out the window. You know? <laughs> I bet. Because, you know, they don't, it's, it's like a new wake up call for a lot of people. Sure. Like now everybody, everybody, everybody today is doing it. Yeah. Like it's the, it's the in thing to wear the metal shirts and all this stuff. Back then it was like, kill your mother, kill your father music type of thing. Right. Yep. Yep. And then you get jumped you get, you, people you get jumped. I see, see friends running in high school, like yo, yeah. and like the Dominicans with machetes chasing him. Like, wow. Yo, run. <laughs> what? I wasn't gonna follow him. Like, yeah, sure, run. sure, sure. <laughs> you know, but uh, that school was like the battleground for me. Like there was a lot of people that were key people that sh like educated me without yeah. them knowing it. I see. Like so, who else was there? I, I hung out with them a little bit, but I used to hang out with more Mexicans and. Um, the 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 Mexican Hondurans, that was my crowd. I didn't hang out with my own people yeah. they were too loud. Yeah. And I don't really like people. So like blah 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 blah. I keep too loud. I can't yeah. deal with that. And I used to go like dab in and dab out with them. I see, I see. They yeah. would hang out at Hamble Hamble courts or in the music room and I'll be there and we you know, I'm a drummer at the time, you know, and we jam out, whatever, they play whatever, he never got it, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. Sure. Like, you know? <laughs> right, so, yeah, <laughs> and it was cool. And uh, I, I think the main band that attracted me that was shown to me from that little group was like basically anywhere from DSI, Death, obviously. Yeah. Uh, obituary. Obituary, yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Carcass, uh -huh. uh, Napalm Death, obviously, um, Cancer, uh, there's a whole list. Yeah. Keep, keep, those are like, when you say death metal, those are the names that pop up. Yep, yep. And I had to have it. Yeah. Uh, the Culero Brothers gave me CDs. They gave me the first Screen Body Gore. Oh, okay. Merciful Fate, I forgot the title, uh, Ugly Kid Joke. Okay, yeah. Uh, Suicide of Tennessee. Okay. They didn't give it to me. I bought it off of them. Yeah. And I went home, but I don't have a CD player. So I just stacked them there for like a year or so. And then my father got the system, and that was it. <laughs> and I live in a basement apartment, so I was blasting music left and right. Wow. And people walking by going, <laughs> like, oh my god, what is that? You know, my level of creation, I can't leave them out. Like, oh wow. my god, the from, oh, oh man, god. it's like for me, music is what kept me out of trouble. Yeah, people don't know much about me, I let them know as much as I let them know. But like, a lot of these people that used to call me poser, I don't, I never took it personal. But it drove me to do what I'm doing today, in a sense. Not because to prove anybody anything, but it's more to prove myself yeah. that I could do what you could do. Yeah. And I don't like when people tell you, you can't do something. You yeah, know, sure. I'm the type of person that like, okay, I know I can't fly, so I'm not going to do it. Yeah. But like, oh, I got this idea. That's not going to work. Like, just because you don't have the same vision that I do doesn't mean, and the drive, doesn't mean that's not going to work. That's right. There's always a way of doing things. Yeah. And that's what that taught me. Yeah. You know, and like I said, I, I try to be, live life more positively. But it seems like I'm attracted to negativity sometimes, like we all are. And I try to be a good person because being a bad person didn't work for me or back in the days. Yeah. And 
fighting and punching people in the face for no reason. That's who I was back then. Sure, and sure. A lot of people who ever know from high school never knew what this about. Yeah. So for, it was easy for me to go and shut the fuck up. Yep. <laughs> but I was like, I don't want to get in trouble with my father. Yeah. I have to keep him going. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, the Coletto brother was also the first time I bought a guitar was from them. Okay, okay, okay. It was a right handed Ibanez. A right handed Ibanez, okay, I see. But I see. still string the left hand. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I sure. remember uh, they were selling it to me for 100 bucks. But back then, 100 bucks was like a billion dollars. Yeah, now, sure, sure, sure. Inflation. But uh, I remember I didn't have no money. My father would not give me money. So I took my comic books. My everything I had cards, comic kind of books, and I stood in front of Lois movie theater. Yeah, I do it, uh, blanket on the floor, put my comic book there. So, there from seven in the morning to eight at night time, nobody the first time, nobody bought it. Yeah, I grabbed my crate, dragged it back home. I said, I'm not doing this. My father told me, Don't give up, it's not gonna happen overnight. You gotta keep trying. Yeah, but the following day I went, I made $300. Oh, shit. okay, <laughs> and I was like, Oh. Give me my guitar. <laughs> you know? And it was it, from there, like, I didn't know how to tune. The, I was trying to imitate the, the Ventures. You know what I'm talking about? The group, The Ventures? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Group, Walk, Don't, uh, Don't Run. Yeah. They're all, all classic, but don't sing. Just uh, um, instrumental. Instrumental, like yeah. Like surf music type of thing. Yeah, sure. I tried to learn the Animals, House of the Ranks of the Sun. Uh-huh. But it was all ding, 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 ding. Like, all out of tune. I yeah. didn't know how to tune. Sure. And eventually, I mean, you know, I went to friends. And they tuned the guitar for me. Yeah. And I tried to carry it home without, you know, like a little knot, you will take it off. Yeah. And that's how I went. I started practicing. I learned by hearing everything. I didn't take class for guitar. I had to learn how to play by yeah, myself. Sure. So it's like, I play a song and I look for the chord. I find it. I play it. It might not be the correct chord, but it sounds like it. But it sounds like it, yeah. As long as it sounds like it, I could play the song. How, how old were you when you got that guitar, if you remember? Oh, you. Let me see. That was. Around 15, 16. Okay, little, 15. Maybe 15, 14, 15. Around. Okay, okay, I see. Um, and you men you mentioned already, um, you know, your dad hearing hearing tapes and throwing them out. But when you started getting more and more into it, what were what were your parents' um, thoughts about everything? You know, well, you know how today, like, a lot of people have, like, collection of metal t-shirts and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I would be one of those individual except that every time I went home and looked for a shirt it was never there. <laughs> so either they took it and threw it out. Yeah. Especially like anything with uh upside down cross or uh -huh. like anything DS. I had long I have things that I'm like crying now that like I wish I had. Yeah. They found uh, uh the a cradle of filth, Jesus is the cunt. Oh forget it. <laughs> <laughs> that shirt yeah. What? <laughs> That one and also the DSI where they have the uh, what's the name of the song? Um, they decide, dissect uh, Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, once, okay. once, upon a, once upon a cross. Once but I had the cross. big one. I used to go to high school with that. Wow. And people were like, <laughs> 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 because like I, I'm, I don't know if the other guys used to wear it because I didn't hang out like that. Yeah, I yeah, sure. Like, I, I wear whatever the hell I wanted, and I yeah. wore, I walked through high school and people were just like part away. <laughs> <laughs> because I thought, you know, kill, every hip hop dude is like, oh, you listen to that Kill Your Mother, Kill Your Father music. I was like, I've never heard a song as far as I, so today, that's yeah. just that. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I never yeah. had either. I never have either. <laughs> so I was like, where did you get that from? <laughs> so, you know, and I, that's how I started learning how to play the guitar. Um, I was, I'm original of marching drums, like so I learned before, of just a snare tank. Yeah, yeah. And then I grabbed, Gradually went to a full drum kit. That was a different experience, and I always love guitar because it's like the, 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 the harmony, it's the tones. It's something like everybody has a you know, like Chinese says, the chi. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a note that everybody has, and when you hit that note, you, you, you can relate. Yeah, sure. And I think that's what music does. And, and, but you might like this band or this song, and I listen to the same thing. I'm like, mm. yeah, but to you, it, it hits you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that's why everybody has. That's a uniqueness. Everybody has their own preference. Absolutely. Um, and what year was it when you started your first band? First band was Dead Season. Uh, I started that band in 1994 going 95. Oh, okay. Okay. And what did you play in that band? Drums. Okay. You played drums in that band. I see. I see. Um, so I'll ask you more about that 
in a second. Um, but let's hear a little bit uh, about Greg, your first bands that you played with. Um, I'm, I'm guessing they were in, in Poland, the, yeah. the first bands you played with. So yeah, talk about your first yeah, bands. So in my high school class, there were a few guys that, that listened to metal. And then this kid was transferred from another school. That he moved uh, or whatever, and uh, he joined our class. And he he played electric guitar, and he was really good at it. So I started to like talk to him about it. Then that's who I bought my first guitar from, electric guitar. From. Uh, okay, what, so what kind was, of guitar was it? It was a Russian guitar. Okay, okay, okay. It was. Uh, it had a bunch of like. Uh, Inventions. I don't okay. know. Instead of the knobs, they would have buttons. So there would be three buttons on the bottom under the pickups and three buttons on the top <laughs> for different uh, setup of the pickups. I guess. Sure, sure. There would be this thing by the bridge, like a rubber bar, a metal a metal bar with rubber on the top. So on the spring, so you would pop it up, and it would be kind of muting the the <laughs> the uh, string. So and then. <laughs> It wasn't wow. really working well, plus you don't really play the whole song on it, so yeah, sure. it didn't make much sense, but <laughs> they had that. There was, uh, uh, the plug was also not the usual uh, one, uh, pin was just like the, the one for the mic. Yeah. So so, so when I got this guitar, first thing I, I did, uh, <laughs> I drilled the hole. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then replace that with the actual plug that, that goes with the wow. guitar. Wow! Like, okay, because you know the, that 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 the thick uh, layer of, of paint was hard, so I'm pressing, 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 and then suddenly the whole drill goes. <laughs> 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 I probably cracked the whole guitar, right? But I didn't. So I'm like, Psh. <laughs> yeah, so I, I I changed that, modified that, and wow. I was learning how to play. I I got like first like like the the uh, like tabs. Uh, um, they started having like little books for for even for metal, so so basic riffs and stuff like that. I started buying those with the music store. Started practicing with those and I play like Megadeth, uh, Judas Priest, and some Metallica was there. Uh, uh, another one was like uh, Santana, Vi, uh -huh. like, like 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 simplified songs, sure. like like and, and show them by, by like main themes and so on. And that would be like you would get a cassette with it. The cassette was the stereo, two channels. One channel would be the guitar. One channel would be the uh -huh. background music. So you could, if you had the, the, those, those book boxes back then, yeah. you would just switch to one side and you only had the background music to, to jam with. That's right, that's right. So you learn it and then you use the guitar and, and you play it with it. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Uh, wait, what was the question? Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, the, the, some of the first bands you played with. Okay, so yeah, so uh, my friends in, the, in in school, we started like I started convincing them to start a death metal band. I don't even remember if we had a name back then or not. So one friend was the vocalist, one friend was the other guitarist. I was the, also a guitarist. I was writing the songs for that and then and the lyrics. And when then we got a, a drummer from. Their friends outside the school, so we yeah. convinced them at the school's dorm to give us the like they had a little room. They didn't have much instruments. They had some some simple drum set, and then I would have to buy my own amp and bring it. But we all like all guitars and vocals to the one speaker, <laughs> one amp, and then we would start jamming out. But after a while, we got kicked out because it was too like loud, brutal, and we I guess. Some guys stopped being consistent too, so so, so it see. was you know, breaking up. And then I was like always looking for a band to start a band, but it was always hard to find a drummer, hard to find a bass player. Guitarists were everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah, so, that's right. So so some I heard somewhere or, or so the, the like uh, piece of paper. <laughs> Post on, on, on the somewhere. So I called the number, so we set up rehearsal. There was like doom metal band. They were looking for okay. guitars. So I come in, I started playing Megadeth solos. They're like, this is not really what we're looking for. That's too fast. <laughs> we need like, like mood, like, uh -huh. like my like bright, you know, Paradise Lost and uh -huh. influences. 
but then they thought about it. So they called me again. Okay, you can come in. So I brought my stuff. We played with them for a little bit. I don't know, a year or two. We played, that's when I played my first show. Oh, okay. Where where was your first show so at? That was, was it in Warsaw? Uh, like Battle of the Band kind of thing, yeah. like like local bands from the, from the city of Jeshuv. Oh, okay, okay. And so just... one of the high schools uh, organized it and invited whoever band like wanted to play. So we we came and played, and all of a sudden we like it was a lot of people, and then we find out that they sold like uh, fifteen hundred tickets. So so that was like how many? Wow! <laughs> so how many people came apparently? So that was cool. Then uh, later on, I, I departed from the band. Uh, I wanted to play something more ambitious. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I was with no band for a while and started another band. Uh, so that was Dream, Dream Rise, the this band, the double metal band. Then uh, another band that I was starting, like I wanted to play Thrash. Okay, so, yeah. So, so we jammed for a while, but then we fell apart again. Another band I joined was the Epitome. Is still active band, grindcore band from Poland. Oh, okay, okay. So you're part of that. So, but it always uh, bothered me that 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 it was. They always do solo. I had to. I, I like to play like Metallica, all the stuff. And yeah. Then, and I, every practice, I had to turn down. Every home, I had to turn up to play with, with that. Oh my god, that's pretty nice. <laughs> so I played with them one show. We were like like. Uh, the doctor's uh, white, uh, what do you call this? With the oh, like lab coat? Yeah, 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 yeah. Put some paint on it at times. To look more pro, nice. so, so that, was, that, was, that was cool. Wow. Then I left the band. Before I moved to the state, I still, some friends from past bands, they were like, oh, can you record solos for our demo? So I came to the studio, recorded two solos. They called me. That same evening, uh, if you don't mind, we want you to be permanent member because <laughs> we love it so long. So. Wow. Okay, so those guys I played another show with before I left, moved here. Oh, uh, okay. What was the name of that band? Cremaster. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see. Um, so, yeah. And when you when you moved here, it was specifically to play with Go to Mentis? Is that no, no, right? no, no, okay, no, okay. Moved, you moved yeah. here first and then. Yes, yes. I, I, after like, yeah, six months maybe or, or. I so see. I, I bought the first guitar because I was itching already to, to play so I was just playing at home and, and, and jamming 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 it was my space times so I was looking for bands I came to some uh, auditions uh, didn't work out and a lot of them let's go to Mantis I, I was like how am I gonna talk to them I barely can say anything in English but so somehow because I remember before you joined the Golden Mentis, I reached out to you. Remember, I asked you if you wanted to be part of the Mice, and you said you, you were doing some, you, I think you were working or something too much. I think it was after Golden Mentis. Was it? No, yes. because you were still in the band. We were sharing the room, remember the uh, Music Unlimited? So that was Golden Mentis. Yeah, that's after, but before that. Before then you disappeared for a couple of years and just showed up out of nowhere. So I'm a little confused all the time. Yeah, I think it was uh, after Golden Mentis did reach out, and I told you I'm. I'm retired from playing and then uh, but uh, like six months or a year passed I started again like them so I started uh, or maybe that was when we were still playing with, with Pana and then uh, then I was like I need to try to do it again and, and we yeah but the, the, like the timeline I'm like, like, like yeah, yeah. six months I'm like so when the hell did I ask you like yeah, I, I think after after oh, okay. after after so we share the room the yeah, on, music yeah. Unlimited. on Music Unlimited, right? right. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. So I came on the train to the Bronx. They waited for them. I remember some car pulls up. I'm like, oh, that'll be them. I go there. You guys got the message. They're like, what? <laughs> 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 so apparently it wasn't there. I was waiting so long. And, 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 and someone showed up, picked me up, and they took me to the Music, music Unlimited. unlimited yeah. and, they they required for the candidate to to learn the one song just from listening to it. So they sent me that through MySpace. I I learned it my way. What song was that? Do you remember? Uh, Lost Souls. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. And then I played it with them. I I don't 
like they just and they're like what? <laughs> you know, parts that need to be fixed, but but yeah, basically I played the song with them first time and then played some solos, improvise a little bit here, and like so they can listen to my skills, my abilities. Wow. And then I think left the room to to you know, discuss it and came back like well, I'm, I'm <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Um. So I'm, I'm going to ask you more about your time with Golden Mentis in a second. Um, but let's go to, to Mel for a little bit. And Mel, before you talk about Shaquan, um, something that you were talking about before we started here, um, I, about listening to like, well, death metal, other extreme forms of metal with your dad in the car and talk about like your parents' <laughs> uh, uh, perspective on the music that you were listening to and all of that. Well, it was funny, like, I think, like, you know, my dad was a little bit more accepted than my mother was. They were for kind of accepted. I think that, you know, I think that, whereas, I think that my mother, like, it was, it was like, you know, because like I said, she used to listen to Motown, stuff like that, and R, like, R&B, and this is like far away from the stuff that she listened to. So, you know I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, I know, like, if I talk to all that, so like, raised me throughout this whole thing, like, it might, you know. She would definitely tell you it was definitely an experience. Yeah. So it was it was crazy because like when I I'll be in my room I'll be playing uh, you know playing my metal music and everything like that. So I remember one time like she, like I think for my 15th birthday she got me headphones for for the radio, and I was just like I would do it like that. But it was like you know she wasn't feeling the shirts, uh-huh. she wasn't feeling the music, she like the messages and the music and everything like that. Because I mean like the positive like some hardcore stuff it was like there's some positive stuff in it yeah yeah I mean? yeah but, sure so the hardcore was positive and everything like that but she didn't really like you know the death metal the thrash metal stuff everything like the messages in there so yeah I think my father was a little bit more exacting you know it was like you know we'd be in the car and I'd, I'd be playing Demolition Hammer Morbid Angel Cannibal Corpse you know I'd play all this stuff everything like that we'd just be in the car and just jamming to it and my pops was like he just said torture. He said torture. <laughs> <laughs> he was just saying, he was saying, like, did he just say Satan? I'm like, yeah, dad, he said Satan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we just be like, you know, like we jam into it in the car and stuff like that. And it was like, you know, yeah, I think Paul Paul, he, like, my father felt like, oh, this is just a phase or everything like that. Yeah. Yeah, my mother was just like, you know, she, she was just like, oh, like, you know, like she, she said she wished she, she wished that, like, you know, Spend more time on like other music than like you know metal. Yeah, sure. Kind of thing. But it, you know, it it was interesting. I think that um, you know, I mean, it's funny. My mother actually knew what like say if like so I hear doing a bitch wear shirt or a suffocation shirt, like she would know like the logo of the band. <laughs> like she, like, I kind of familiarized her with that from the shirts that I used to wear. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's just less. You know, you know. I just, I think she, uh, you know. Uh, she didn't enjoy everything like that, but some stuff like she would tell me she would like some. She would like the music. Yeah, she I see. Like that, I see. You know, but she wouldn't like the growling. She wouldn't like the growling or the vocals, everything like that. So like, I'll, I'll play. A, funniest thing, like I remember, you know, like my family, like coming over to my house for, um, I mean, it was just Thanksgiving, nineteen ninety one, and it was it's funny because like, I always I was my favorite thing to listen to at the time was Anthrax's Attack of the Killer Bees. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. So I, my mom was like, she goes, Mel, come in. And I'm like, okay. Well, she's like, yo, get your radio and get that tape that you listen to all the time. And like, that's the way we talk about starting up a posse. I'm like, okay. So <laughs> we're playing the tape and like, you know, like, it's like, you fucking whores. That's <laughs> all you want. And like, and my, you know, it was really like, like, my whole family like, <gasps> <It's> like <laughs> they're just shocked. <laughs> You listen to this, Jamel? I'm like, oh like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so like, she really put me on the spot with that one. Man. So, and then all of a sudden, that just kind of became a thing. Like whenever we had like a gathering at my house, you know, they're like, yeah, you want to know what Mel's listening to? <laughs> get the tape, get the radio, play that, and talk about it for the next 20 minutes. Wow. So, so it was like, it was funny. You know, I mean, honestly, I, I gotta say that my mom and my dad, they, they were good sports. Yeah, yeah, they were good yeah, sports. yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but before I ask you more about Shaquan, just a, a question that I want to circle back uh, uh-huh. for with um, Gio and Greg. Uh, your first shows that you attended. Um, Gio, let's start with you, and then we'll go with with Greg. First show I attended. Uh, 
that would be Since I didn't go out much, I would say I can't pinpoint exactly which one, but I think it was either the Malawi part, the King of New York. Okay. The first one, I don't know if it's 94, 95, I can't remember the year. I okay. Have to and uh, I said between that one and, or a little earlier, the Humanized Evolution. Um, what else was in that bill? At Coney Island High. Oh, at Coney Island High. Okay, okay, okay. I think okay. you were there. I was there? I think so because I know I hit you in the pit and it was not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was. I told like that shot. I mean, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. That's how we sometimes bump each other. Yeah, of course. Yeah. In the pit. But it was a humanizing evolution. And do uh, you remember who else was playing that? I don't know. It was. It wasn't Cryptopsy, was it? No, no, that it was, was Cryptopsy. Yeah. Oh, actually. Thank you. You just pinpointed it. It was Cryptopsy first show in New York at the bank. Oh, it was four okay. darts. Wow. Uh, Cryptopsy was like little kids at the time. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, Pessimist. Okay. From um, Maryland. Yeah. And there's one more band I, I can't remember. Uh, Taz put that show. Uh, Lito Song. She passed away, you know, but she was also in the first year. Yeah, Taz. Yeah. Yeah. So. Wow. But she she booked that show. She. Amazing! It's just like I saw crypto for the first time, and that's where all these technical things came out. Besides death, yeah, sure, sure. When death is gradually, every CD is not the same. I know. He was getting more technical, but crypto, crypto, flow, yeah. the way he plays it, all over the place. Uh -huh. like, Dude, stay still. For uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but that was my first show, I believe. But that, I don't remember the year, but I think that was it between those three. I see. I see. And what? What, what do you remember thinking, regardless of which one of those was the first, but what, what do you remember thinking about what you saw? I uh, mean, obviously you heard the music and all that, but being there is a little... Yeah, I mean, I think I, I hung out with the guys, the bands, and yeah. they were cool. Like, you know, you get this idea that some of these people are rock stars, some of them are. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you can't say hi without them, like, you know? Yeah, yeah. There. Uh, but Cryptosy was like little kids that were awesome, getting a shirt, a CD. Uh, pessimist. I still I'm friends with Kelly still the guitarist. Yeah. You know, uh, the Gold Guts they were cool, and I can't remember the, the other band that was there. Yeah. With the Human Eyes uh, at the other show at Coney Island, George and I are still friends. The drummer, uh, Rich and I are still friends. Uh, everybody in that band also you know, I'm still friends with. And Evolution they were cool. Like, you know, I, I mean, I guess it's. The difference between that then and now is that they're more accessible. Yeah. Everybody's on Facebook and yep. I could talk directly to the singer of freaking Kumbaya, whatever, you know. Yeah, sure, Back sure. Back then was like, you had to work for it. Yeah. You had to get in there and show that you're a fan. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's just cool. Um, I mean, yeah, those are the only three. And Malali Park, obviously, is just Bronx people. Yeah, yeah, District yeah. District Nine, uh, Mike, uh, Six and Violence. That was the name of the band. Yeah, Six and Violence, that yeah. That was awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. who was in that band? I, I don't know who. I only saw them that one time. And huh. I, I did reach out to Frank from Fire and I said, yo, what can I get to see from you? <laughs> you know, but, um, yeah, they had a drummer in the mosh pit. What? <laughs> yeah, they're a drummer there was two band. drummers. The one that played what? the bass, <laughs> yeah, and some cymbals, yeah, and the other one played the rest of the drums. That's insane. <laughs> and Chuck Isaac has those videos. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. Sure I'm gonna have to watch. I, I'm I've, I've seen clip. I've seen little parts of, it, but I never watched the whole thing for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm to... somewhere in there. I went okay. to all of them. So it's just, wow, uh, that was awesome. That was That's like, crazy. Uh, that was the first time in the Bronx that you felt free. Yeah, yeah. Like, listen to our music. That, that's how Of course, yeah. Because every yeah. corner, you, you, everybody's giving you, a, like, a 30 look, like, look at this, whatever. What is it they call the, uh, the metalheads back then? Oh, what, the what, what The they? rappers, or the, the, when high school, you're in, the, in the, your own block, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, they said, don't, don't mess with it. He's crazy. Look, listen to the Kill Your Mother, Kill Your Father. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were all back with labels weirdos. Yep. Because of the music we listen to. Absolutely. Um, now, so, so you, you mentioned that you, you and Mel, uh, you know, bumped into each other in the pit. Uh, so you, did you already know, did you all already know each other at that yeah, point? Yeah, I, I believe so. Uh, yeah. For those shows, because, uh, 
I did go to shows when they were playing. Oh, I booked them at the time. I was at the beginning stage of booking, but I was doing Dead Season, the same thing. So what I did with Dead Season, back then, at least from my experience, I yeah. didn't book one club. But the idea of the clubs in New York City is that you have to give them a tape. Uh huh. I skipped that line. Yeah. Like I, whenever my band, that season was booked, all the bands, oh, can you get me in? Come on. Yeah, and that's I how see. I build up the whole booking thing because I, I'm not a social person. Yeah, <laughs> sure, I mean? sure, sure. And it's amazingly, I mean, how many shows I booked from there to now. Yeah. And the, my, the bands that I have dealt with, but uh, that's how I met Mel through Shaquan. Also. Murray, who passed away from uh, uh, Hellbound, Scotty Mack, when they were playing Vic Twin. Ah, I see, I see, I see. I used I to see. book at the Black Ah, I the see. The original Black Ball in the Bronx uh, with Nicky Cannon. But, uh, so, you know, I gave a, like, shout out to, you know, Aisha. Yeah. You know, also on the Five Soul. And also Gigi, that's another person that you bump into the pit with. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> you know, G, I, oh, yeah? You know, Gigi's awesome, man. Gigi, oh, she, she da- really i never good. seen somebody dance in a, in a brutal pit with so much finesse. Wow. Yeah, oh, she, that's she, amazing. She's like this, and I'm like, you look at her, she's like, dancing my leg, but she's hitting, she's hitting everybody. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, you hear about quarterbacks talking about, like, they have the great mechanics of throwing. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. She had the mechanics of, like, punches and kicks. She had the perfect mechanics. <laughs> and she hits hard. But it that's was just like, yeah, I've been hit by it. It was like, pure. <laughs> Wow! That's how I bump into people, and I like I didn't even hang out like everybody that you know that used to do that. Used yeah, to, sure. Like, whenever I get the chance, I go to a show and I'm like, "Hey, what's up?" And we'll talk for a little bit, and then I'll just walk my way out back outside. Yeah, you know? yeah. And you know, Mel, I know Greg. I, you know, he got in. The, we did a video with Pyrexia. Um, uh, in New Island, I think yeah. that's the first time me and Greg got into it. Like, no, 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 no. I did a car wheel, almost broke my neck. <laughs> but, I did, you know, but it was fun. But it, it's fun when you're doing this because for some people, some people take that as a therapy. Yeah. Some people take it like letting aggression out. Yeah. But when you're surrounded by people that that you know that even if you hit each other, they will pick you up. Yes. Yeah. And they Definitely. will look out for you. Yep. And that environment I love about about the, some of the shows and a lot of the shows, you know, everybody looked out for one another. You know, like, it's, it's just awesome. And uh-huh. you didn't care if you got a broken nose, whatever the hell happened to you. You went home like a trophy. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's funny like that, but it, that's how I feel about yeah, it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And it's an energy that is a give and take because that's when the band projecting that aggressiveness and then you're in the pit looking at somebody across from you like, <laughs> you know, you're not aiming for that person, sure. but you're making that contact. You're like, you ready? And you grab hands and start spinning. You know? <laughs> and it sounds childish, but it's fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's fun until somebody gets hurt, then it's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my, 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 you know, my, my experience with that stuff. Um, I met a lot of people in the pit. Um, Slayer, that was like, Everybody got together when Slayer so playing ball everywhere. As soon as heard, I was like, "Holy hell!" Whack it, whack it. There's no place on the floor that's not the pit no, at that no, point. No. Um, it was just fun. For me, it was fun. I didn't, as far as I know, I didn't hurt nobody. You know? No, you don't. Yeah, know. sure. Yeah, of course, nobody. of course. Yeah, there's some people that I know I hurt, but I, they don't count. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> but it was just pure fun, and like as you get older. You mentally, you still think you could do these things. Yeah. Yeah. But your body tells you, go ahead, try and <laughs> <laughs> That's right. To be my guest. <laughs> uh, uh, I learned that the hard way. When oh, yeah, yeah. Talk, last, talk, talk about that. Last time we got out of the pit, it was, um, it was, a, it was at Webster Hall. It was uh, Dehumanized, Suffocation, Pyrexia. And I think it's terrible to play that show. Okay, okay. So, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm not even in the pit. <laughs> this thing is comes up to me. And I pushed him off. So I pushed him off. My right thumb came out of the socket. Oh, no. Hit me right into my wrist. Oh, came shit. Came back up. Went right back to the socket. Oh, I, thought I, broke, I thought I broke my thumb. So it swelled up to the size of a catcher's bag. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I'm like, yo, I think I broke my thumb. So I'm walking to the wall. I'm like, hey, tell me, yeah, I think I broke my thumb, man. And, um, I walk, and my head is swollen. So like, I stay at the show the whole time. So after, so after the show, I go to the pizza place right by there. And I call my mom. 
said, Mom, what's up? I'm like, uh, Ma, I think I broke my thumb. <laughs> broke your thumb how? I'm like, uh, I was in the pit. She goes, Mel, you're 36 fucking years old. What the fuck are you doing in the box pit? She told me, and I was, after that, it just clear. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, ever since then, I've retired from the box pit. Uh, I'm back in the pit. Um, so, so Gio mentioned the Malali Park, uh, Malali Skate Park show uh-huh. as like the first, um, first show. The, I, Gio, I guess it's the first show you went to in the Bronx, right? Yeah, it's a, some mixture of the other two, but it was called King of New York at the time. Yeah. Uh, I found out about that through Chucky Isaac. He's becoming the popular guy now right now. So, but Chucky, he was like the guy with the flyers. He was the guy ah, there, like, at school, like, oh, yo, yo, yo. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But he was active always with bands and stuff like that. He got his YouTube channel. Yeah. Like, he records all these bands. Yeah. He went and recorded the last one. He opened up for Demolition Hammer too. Like he's on point. He goes yeah, he is. Yeah. And uh, what, what can I say about this show? I knew Frank Fahrenheit at the time because that first guitar that I bought, I bought from the Culetto brothers. Yeah. I brought it to Frank, and we went to Hoffman, where they used to live in um, oh, on eighty seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. I think District Nine Mike was staying there for a month, or crashing there for a minute. Yeah. And when you walk, you used to walk into the apartment. They had the dragon. Uh, um, drawn uh, like somebody drew it on the wall that's right that's right and he was the one who fixed my first writing guitar to a left guitar like oh, all the cables and stuff okay and i was he never charged me a penny and i was always grateful because wow. to me they were like a big band they yeah, are sure sure sure, sure. they are yeah like, wow you know and he treated me like a human being he wasn't like a you know a dick yeah sure until today last time i spoke to him about we spoke uh, a while back it's like you know, I change. I obviously don't look that young anymore. Yeah, so yeah. Kind of, like, oh shit, deal. You know, type of yeah, thing. yeah, sure. And um, yeah, everything was cool. Like the Amalari show changed a lot for me in the hardcore version of it because I yeah. was more into death metal. Sure, sure. And if you see the videos, you see why there was so much freedom. Everybody was having a blast. Yeah, everybody, including the bands. It was just, and then you had the bike. It was called King of New York. That's the, the whole thing, and they had doing freestyle, doing all this right. trick, all this stuff, and you know, and then go to the bands, and man, it just we want that back. Yeah. Yep. But you know, I know, absolutely. Mel was was that your first show in the Bronx? Did you did you go to that show? No, no, I didn't go to that show. Like my first show in the Bronx. Yeah. Was was a Kadiria, Hebrew, and Ira. At Blackthorn. At Blackthorn. At Blackthorn. Yeah. That, that was the first show in the Bronx. Wow. Wait, wait, what year was that? That was 97. 97. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, and yeah, talk, talk about that experience some. I mean, you, you've been to plenty of shows by this point, but going to that kind of show in the Bronx, um, why don't you talk about that a little bit? Well, it was fun, man. It was fun. Yeah, we, like, we get there, you know, I think we're straight playing, checking them out, everything like that, so... Went back in the van, smoked a whole bunch of weed, mm-hmm. and then we came out for irate. So, you know, we had to show like irate, you know, you know, irate, you know, they get to pick going. So it was it was like it was rockers in the pit. And like I remember that show I got hit harder than I've ever been hit before in my life. <laughs> it was my, it was some dude like he was, he was like he was like twice my size and he was built like he was built like Taz the Rock. So he reminded me of Taz. Yeah. So we came back. I, I think this was this was intentional. I don't know why, but I think this was intentional. He came back and he hit me with a back fist, like, oh my he right God. in my face. It was great. You know, like, I felt like I caught the Holy Ghost for a second. <laughs> and, like, and, like, you know, it was crazy. So, and, like, you know, like, you know, like, my mouth, my mouth was busted up and everything like that. But it was, like, you know, okay, no problem. So, like, you know, after that, you know, Hate Breed played. And it was, it was funny. I was like, wow. Like, you know, it's like, this man is, like, hard, man. And, then, like, you know, it's, you know, this is, like, I think this is, like, a few months before Satisfaction of, of Satisfaction is the Death of Desire came out. Ah, a few months okay. before that, so it was like that was a prelude. I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, this, these guys, they they kill it. So then all, so then the last like when Kenira came on, you know, it was funny. You know, I was, you know, I was still in the pit. You know, I don't know, I was silly like that. I'll like, I'll get like a busted whatever, and I'll still be in the pit. Yeah, that's how it was back then. And like I remember, I think uh, I think Kenira did the um, did a cover of the. The song Invaders by, uh, by Iron Maiden. Yeah, yeah. And they made it into their style. And I remember thinking that was like so freaking cool. But it was, 
that's my time, you know what I'm saying? Black girl, you know, being amongst, you know, all my brethren, my brothers, brethren, and sisters, and stuff like that. We all had a great time. And, you know, it was a show. It was like, you know, it's kind of like that show was kind of, it's a body of like, you know, a Bronx style show. Yeah. It was the embodiment into that, yeah. I mean, uh, you have to understand something. The Bronx bands, compared to other bands, they might have their own little circle things, but like, I rate pits. District 9 Pits, uh, EGH, even though they're not from the Bronx. Sure. But when those bands play, they have to have ambulances outside because they got violent. <laughs> hey, violent is not even the word. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but that's, that was like a tradition. And no matter when they played, as soon as like, dum, 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 oh, yes, 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 yes. Everybody. Even, yep. the, even the cook in the kitchen is coming. <laughs> <laughs> So shout out to Phil, <laughs> Phil <laughs> old DJ, all the fellas from yeah, Lightning. Yeah. Wow. And man, oh man. Also Mike District Nine, hope he's doing better. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, but it's just since we're doing this Bronx thing, it's it's that energy that the Bronx projects outside of the, the borough yeah. that people can't handle. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they want to imitate. Yep. And everything, like, we play a show, I played a festival upstate New York, and the band before us, no, the band that was two t- um, that was setting up, started playing an Iray song. Huh. And I, I'm like, that's an Iray song. That's how influential the Bronx yep. is. Uh-huh. You know? Yep. I believe Bronx is like ECW. You remember the intro oh, for ECW? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was this, the statement that that song before, dun, 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 that used to say, Survive if I let you. That's Survive the Bronx. Survive if I let you. Wow. That's the theme that I hear about the Bronx, about the metal scene, the hardcore scene, the punk scene. There's so much here, and they all sound different. Yep, yeah. they do. Yeah. They really do. You know, so a lot of swag, yeah. It projects their personal anger, frustration, happiness, and that's how they, I believe, I'm talking yeah. about for myself. Sure. When I play, I record something, or I write something, I'm not thinking about, let me see what Death, I, even though Death is my favorite band, yeah, yeah. I don't know, oh, let me see what Chuck was playing. Here. Yeah, sure, sure. Like, let me see how I'm feeling today. Let me see, you know, like, eh. I started playing with riff, whatever it resonates with how I'm feeling, yeah. that's what I'm writing. Yeah. And Greg, he's a pro when it comes to music. He tabs, like, I could read music, but he tabs, I don't have the patience, but... You know, I don't know. Yeah. Like, he does that perfectly, and he he does that. And even when we don't practice, or we have no sh- we have a show that's at festivals coming up, I think we reach that grown-up level that we don't need to go to a studio. Sure. We practice at home. Yeah. And then before the show, we might practice one just so because of the drum. That's right. And then we go do what we have to do. Wow. That's what we've been doing. I know right now everybody, we're older. He's a brand-new brand father. Yeah. So, you know, everybody's taking their time because it's music. Yeah. You know, at one point or another, you have to take a break, sure. handle your business, and then you can come back to it. It's not like it's a job. It's not a job anymore. Yeah. I, when you're young, you want to get there. Yeah. The offers that we had to get this band signed before, just because whatever change in their contract is the reason I never brought it to the table. Yeah. Like hanging out with Napalm Death at CBGB's. We went to the tour bus because they were signed to Spitfire Records. Uh-huh. Remember that? Uh huh. The guy who ran Spitfire Records is a friend of my old singer, Alex. I'm gonna say your name, Alex. And we went in for free. We hung out on the tour bus with him, and then he was trying to sign us. I see. But then the contract, when it, what he said and what was written, was two different things. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like. If I tell you I'm going to do something, that's what I'm going to do. Yep. I'm not going to be like, oh, okay, let me switch this and try to catch you off guard. Yep. And that's why we never went with that. Not saying that we were like the shit, like we were not irate, we were not, you know, Billy Club Sanders. Shout out to Martin and Marty. You know, you know, it's just, for me, I, w- I would love to get signed. Yeah. So I started my own label. Yeah. And I sign my band, I do distribution and all that stuff. And I do the tours, I do the bookings, I do all the shit that has to be done, I handle it. Yeah. And now bring it to the table. Guys, what do you think? You guys want to do this? How do you feel? This is how much we're getting. This is how much I'm doing. Blah, blah. And if they say yes, I do it. If they say no, we don't do it. Yep. I never pressure anybody just because it's my band. No, it's our band. Sure. I don't care if you're a new person in the band. And I would like to give 
Corey, Juan Gregus. He passed away, our, one of our singers. Uh, mm. He was before Mel. Uh, awesome kid. Left, you know, got died too young, but um, yeah. I just want to give him a shout out for that because he deserves to be in this too. Yeah. You know, he's a brother, he's a club brother too. And But most, besides that, I knew him way before the club. And he's always been, was a great kid. Wow. And he brought a lot of energy to the band, a lot of, like, I didn't expect it. He started as a second guitarist and then he jumped into the mic and Wow. That's who's on the recording of the scene. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I was gonna ask so, you that when we you get know, there. I, I, I say music is is a drug. Yeah, but it's a good drug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it like something that you you need. Yeah. And everything around you is a sound. So you know. That's right. I don't know. I've read the whole move down next. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. This is great stuff so far. Um. So, Greg, why don't you talk about some of your first uh, shows? That you went to? Yes, um, my first metal show was, I was probably about 15. It was in the nearby city over there, local bands from Rzeszów, uh, I think, Salvation, if I remember correctly, the names. Some more, I remember Grave was playing that oh, show. Oh, Grave, wow. Yeah, so I didn't even know who they were. Before. Yeah. Like, just, I thought they were local, but they started speaking from another language from the stage. It was like, I mean, I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, some more famous bands here, but. and then of course that was like there's this uh, historic uh, like uh, castle in uh, the the city's uh, name is Weinzuk, where you go for tours like like museum. Yeah, and one of the buildings in, in that park is like uh, like basketball inside uh, bas- basketball uh, place. So 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 that's where they set up the stage, and that's where it was so it was like in the host- historical. Uh, surroundings, right? Wow, that's a pretty and, cool. And, 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 you know, there was also park benches, you just see people hanging out, having some uh, uh, beers or whatever before yeah. the show. So, so okay. yeah, I went to that show. Uh, they started playing. I, I that, that, that's when I saw the Marsh for the first time. I'm like, what, what's going on? Like, that's so cool, right? I'm, I'm just scared to go, but I'm, I'm gonna dare myself and. Looking, looking, and I finally go. Started doing this. This feels so awesome, right? And then I was like 15, scrawny, skinny kid, uh, short, uh, small person, right? Yeah, yeah. So I go, 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 and all of a sudden I see this huge guy going with his elbow through the <laughs> middle, like from one end to the other. And needless to say, sure enough, his elbow landed on my face. <laughs> I thought I died, but I'm, I'm like, wait, I'm, I'm still. <laughs> so it's definitely a concussion. I had to sit down for a while and then uh, I, I felt better I got back. <laughs> I kept doing this. Uh, and that was my very first metal show. Second show and big show was Man from Death, Obituary and Dismember when they toured the Europe. It was 92. Wow. I believe. So for that we had to we had to travel half to Poland. So, so from, from Again, from that city, there was a music store, there was a little ad that they are going to have the bus. Yeah. You can sign up, pay for the bus, and you can go with all metal heads in one bus. So that's what I did. We went, and it was like spectacular. I was like, my God. Wow. wow. You see those guys from Close Up, and Jesse Pitano was there signing the, the, autographing the tickets or whatever. You know, cool, cool. And the lights, the stage was like nothing like, like the first local show I saw. So, yeah. So it was... It was really spectacular for me. Wow. Uh, very good experience. I had the ticket. You so, still have the ticket? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I found it like in front of my parents' house and I brought it here. I have it in my apartment. Wow, that's yes, really cool. Yes. So that was my two very, very first shows. Like first show and the first big show. Wow. And here in Bronx, I guess the first shows I, I started coming to was the alternative shows when, when I already joined them. Sure. And it was before I was uh, able to play shows with them. I needed a few months to, to learn the material, get comfortable with it, and, and, and uh, get their green light and very comfortable with me playing that. Sure. On stage. Sure. I've seen you at the show. 
Yeah. I don't know. When I first showed him to you, he was like, he was the first thing he just helped these doors, your helicopter and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm playing, I'm, I'm putting on a show. I'm just not just gonna be standing there. I'm, I'm like, I have my like, like, hair down to my ass. <laughs> like, my beard was probably is, is still growing because when I cut it, it was 30 inches. Wow, yeah. but you had long hair at that, yes, at that point. Yeah, so, I see. So, you see that music video for Custom Matches that I had put together, uh, like from like. Footage just from from the shows and, yeah. and some like nuclear blasts incorporated there from like wherever I can find the line, so 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 you can see my my hair and my helicopter <laughs> 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 and everything. everything yeah. Wow. Um, so so Mel, talk a little bit about uh, Shaquan. How did that band come to be? How did the name come about? Uh, um, who all was in Shaquan and? You know what you all sounded like the whole the whole kind of thing, but we'll start start with how uh, Shaquan came to be. Uh, Shaquan, it was it was hilarious. Like we was at a studio party at uh, in a Funkadelic studio, so it was like a hardcore studio studio party. So we're all you know, so we're all hanging out with we're, 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 like outside by the couches and everything like that. So so like you know, we 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 rolled up a blunt and we're like, yo, like who got the light? <laughs> and nobody no one's had the light, so we saw. Two brothers on the other side, and they they like they like to be so like wait a minute, let's see if they got a light. So we go over there, like yo, you guys got a light? He goes down for a session. I'm like okay, <laughs> cool. So we went, so 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 like you know we were smoking and everything like that. It was, it was like me, them, my uh, a couple of my friends. Uh, it was it was uh, my friend Adi at the time. Like we you know we were both looking for bands too. So we, we was like we tried to start a band called Point Blank at the time. Oh, There's another okay. band called Point Blank. Like this is like back in like '97. We Try to start a band called called, 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 Blank, called Point Blank, excuse me. So, so like you know, we're, we're talking and everything like that. So we're figuring that like you know, like we're thinking that maybe we can like you know merge names or whatever. Uh huh. So Shaquan, like Shaquan, it was come up to I think it was I think Anthony and um, and Kyle. This was before I was in the band. They were talking. They were just joking around about what names what name their names should be for the band. And all of a sudden, Sha- like it's called Shaquan, they burst out of laughter, and that's how Shaquan st- stuck. So, oh. so we're thinking like, like it was like it was, it was like they were already a band, yeah. And we're trying to start a band called Point Blank. So then we joined them. And it's like yo, so it was like you know we're, we're we're coming to their band. So it's like you know they're not taking R and A. We're you know we're joining now. Yeah, sure. So, so yeah, so like so you know we, so we joined Shaquan. It was uh, it was me and Adi on vocals. Jerome was on the bass, Kyle was on guitar, and Anthony was on drums. Oh, okay. And it was, it was you know, it was like, you know, so we, we joined and it was funny because like, we, we were like practice a lot and everything. So then all of a sudden, we were practicing for months and this is where, like, I don't know, I, I, I was kind of lazy on this whole thing. I didn't write lyrics, you know, like right then and there. I, I was, you know, I was trying to wait until like, you know, so I forgot the full grasp of the music. Yeah. So all of a sudden, like, we got, we got a show at Coney Island High. You know, within like a month, I'm like, wow. like, 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 like within a month of playing, and I'm just like, yo, we don't have no lyrics. <laughs> so, so I, I just, just went to the lab and I just started, I just wrote, <laughs> just wrote a whole bunch of lyrics, everything like that. You know, like practice like for a whole month and everything. So, you know, we, we have songs with, like, they already have songs made, but like songs with lyrics, like, that didn't come till like, you know, so like right before our first show. I see. Well, my first show with them. And, uh, you know, you know, it was cool because, like, the cool thing with that was that, like, you know, it was, like, it was kind of eye-opening because like, I remember I told you, I'm, I'm a total metalhead coming into this. Uh-huh. Metalhead listened to hardcore and everything like that. Then, like, it was, like, you know, they you know, they, they were listening to stuff like, like, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Wow. They were listening to Paul and Funkadelic. Okay. They were listening to, like, you know, a whole bunch of, whole bunch of like, different, like, like older style music and stuff like that. You know, it was listening to a lot of... Was to a lot of hip hop, a lot of funk, uh-huh. you know, like a lot, you know, a lot of like a lot of stuff, and it kind of open, it kind of opened my eyes a little bit more. Yeah, as far as the other different music, opened me up to a more different music and everything like that. So it's like, you know, that, that's like, that's one of the things I appreciate the most from being a Shaquan. And it was, you know, also it's like I was I was trying to rap, you know, I had no lines, but I was trying to rap, <laughs> and like, yeah, you know, I started to like, you know, I started to play more like, you know, more like hip hop ish type of lyrics and everything like that. Yeah, sure. It was like I think that. Well, you know, when I was in the band, it was like, you know, it was hardcore and everything like that, but it was like, you know, a lot of stuff was just like flow. Ah, I a see. Of, a lot of stuff was flow. And, uh... Very sad, Very sad. <laughs> 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 oh, no. 
I got footage of that too. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, it's hilarious, man. Um, so what, did you? How many? How long was Shaquan together? And 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 did you all play a lot of shows during that time? I think I played. I played maybe about five shows with Shaquan. Okay. Okay. And like after you know, after you know, I was you know because you know, because I felt like I wasn't really like fully developed as a vocalist. I see. And I was kind of like starving in my ways. Yeah. You know, I no, I no, I you know they basically outed me from the band. I see, I you see, know, I because, see. You know, because it was like I would, I didn't really have like I was, I was kind of, like, I was like raw. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I was raw, so it was like they were trying to like make me into a better vocalist, and everything like that. And I was being, kind of being stubborn to that. I see. And you know, you know, it was just like you know they, you know, we had to part ways and everything like that. You know, I always still had the love for them. Yeah. Everything like that. You know, everything was everything was cool between us. Everything like that. But we just say. At the time, I you know I wasn't like committed to growing. I as a see. Band. I see. So so like after that, I think that it, it was around for for many years after that. I'm yeah. not sure exactly when they ended. Yeah. Maybe, maybe like maybe like the um, I would say maybe the mid two thousands. I see. But yeah, it was like you know definitely you know it was you know it was fun times being in the band and like you know just like you know it was kind of like getting my feet wet as far as like you know doing vocals and everything. Um and did did Shaquan did. Uh, while you were in it, did they play shows in the Bronx while you were in it? Well, Black Thorn. Black Thorn. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, Black yeah, Thorn, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who Who else played with Sh- Shaquan at Black Thorn? Do you remember? Or maybe Geo. Geo. Yeah, yeah. Dead yeah. Season. My, my okay. Okay. Yeah. Dead yeah. 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 Season. But uh, I think you played more than five shows because you played. I booked a show on SOS with it was SOS, Shaquan, yeah. Diabolic, Step Too Far, and Dead season. season. Yeah, that's one show. Then I booked another show. A Funkadelic studio. Oh yeah, remember I remember that. Yeah, well, it was that season. Yeah. Shaquan, Step Too Far, and who was the band? Um, I think it was uh, Dead Air, and Dead Air was play, they played too. Not Dead Air. What was it? What? What? Not Fed Up. What was? Yeah, Fed Up. Was it Fed Up? Yeah, fed, fed Up. Yeah, yeah. And then I booked you guys several more times, and you were still in the band. I was still in the band. Yeah. So oh. I think you played more than five shows. Oh okay. Because, wow. Yeah. And then Black Dawn several times. Several times at Black yeah, Thorn, okay. I was, you guys played also with Reborn for Chaos, my older band. After, after, no, I was out of the band at the time. Oh, were you? Okay, I, mean, I was out of the band, yeah. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Was Black, I guess, was Black Thorn the only venue you played at in the Bronx of Shaquan then? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, it's not like there was a lot of venues to play in the Bronx anyway. Um, yeah, but, at that you know, time, but yeah. You know, I can say, like, I have my claim that, you know, I played... In the at, at the Black Door, you know uh-huh, it's uh-huh. like so many great Bronx bands played there. That's right. And I was like, that was like the place. That was you know Bronx. You know, you know, you know Manhattan has Sea Beach. Uh huh. You know, Queens had Castle Heights. You know, it was like in, in the Bronx we had the Black Door. That was that was our that that was our club. You know yeah, what I mean? That that's was, right. That was our area. So it was like definitely you know, to say that you know that I played at the Black Door. You know, definitely you know I, I feel like. You know, I feel like I'm good, you know. Yeah. Like that, you know, that being in the Bronx, I played in the Black Thorn, you know. Absolutely. It was, it was cool. Season. So, that season came, became a part of a project that I was working as Anarchy. That was what it was called first. Okay. And then um, I met, after high school, I met George. I mean, we went to the same high school, but we didn't know each other. Like, we seen each other, but we met after school. I'm like, oh, you guys doing rap and doing this. And I'm like, okay. I'm doing this. Why don't we go to the studio and see what comes up? Yeah. So we went to Ultrasound on 30-something Street, where downtown used to be, uh, the Batcave. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. And we did the jamming now, and we kind of flow, and they were naming the same Slurp at the time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anarchy and Slurp. I'm like, no. We had to come up with something better. So we sat down, and we came up with that season. And after that, we just... A door kind of open yeah. for kids that didn't know much about playing. Oh, you sure. used to go into shows, and you could play whatever you, you think you're good at home. But once yeah. you get on that stage and go clank, 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 and people were like, you know, you realize you need to go back home and still practice some more. Uh-huh. So the, the the vibe was there, the chemistry was there. So we started. I started writing songs. Uh, George is a vocalist. And Ray, his brother, is the second uh, guitar, lead guitar, not the, we switch back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Nobody solo in the band, so no big deal. But, uh, and I started writing the first songs from my old band, Anarchy. 
and then we passed it over and we started working together. We, we had like a good solid 12 songs and we decided to go play a show. Like, let's go out there. And I think it was the Black, the Black Thorn was the first show with them. Oh, okay, okay. I, if maybe I'm, I, yeah, I think Black Thorn was. No, actually, I'm sorry. The first shows was at my father's house, basement apartment. Oh, you did a house show, huh? In the living room. Wow. And we did three of them for my birthday. Okay. And we just invited everybody. Yeah, yeah. I was I was playing a drum, a, two drum set put together, a Frankenstein, I call it. Yeah, it sure. It was like the place were all chipped it. The, the drums were like two different colors, two different tones. The heads were all beat up. Yeah, yeah. Ghetto. You know? Yeah. Ghetto knives. And that's how for show. With Ray had a little boombox like this. That was the guitar cavity. <laughs> and then we had another one, so George could sing through it. We invited everybody. <laughs> the house is packed. My father's in his room. And my mom is in the kitchen. Wow. And we took the, the, the couches out of the living room and put them in the little side hallways. And it was kind of weird for from the, spec, uh, the, the, the aspect of my father not liking that music, yeah. but he'd rather have us there uh -huh, where uh -huh. he could see what we're doing uh -huh. than outside, especially in the block that we lived in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? and, this was still on Creston Avenue, Yeah, huh? Creston. Yeah. And um, we're banging, blah, 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 and you see all the all the, the, the dudes and drug dealers everywhere from the block in the window going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the shit right like there. <laughs> 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 we're playing, we're playing, but we never let them in. Though. Yeah. But we had friends from school, people that from their neighborhood that came out, and we had a packed house. Wow. And it was only three of us, you know. And that's our first show, those three shows. Then we decided to, as a, as a band, just go out to a show together. Yeah. Right? So I don't know if it was Ray or George, wrote a flyer. It says, Cracker Snatch. <laughs> I was like, he's playing at the Pyramid. And we're like, yo, I have a soccer game the following day. So I'm thinking about, like, if I could go to a show or not. Yeah. And it's Saturday, the show, and I have a soccer game on, on Sunday. So George comes up with the idea of painting, our, everybody painting their hair, like with a spray, with color spray. He went gold. I went uh, burgundy. <laughs> Ray went green, and uh, another friend of ours, Eugene, went with blue. Okay. <laughs> and we decided to head to the pyramid. Yeah. As a, as a, as a unit. We get there, we're like waiting for the band. You know, sometimes they have rap and they have events and stuff like that. Yeah, sure. And there's one little round table in the corner. And they say, you can't sit down unless you're going to buy something, like some drinks. All right. They, I don't drink. I never drank in my life. And they're like, all right, you guys order what you guys. Uh, so they ordered Rolling Rock. That was the beer. Okay. We were cracking up because we never heard of it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we sang I or Eliza. <laughs> yeah. 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 And uh -huh. we're sitting there waiting for the band. And waiting for the band, and the place is packed. Here comes two girls on stage, white girls, with G-strings, G-string, gold G-string, and like a like a Madonna pointy nipple thing, <laughs> and they start rapping. <laughs> what? And we're in the corner, like, when is this dance coming up? And she goes, this is Cracker Snatch! And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating, Yo. but maybe George and Ray will tell you the story. Oh my like, God. Yeah. That was in that was in that email, Metal Show, which is some bad shit. <laughs> Yo, I, I, got I, got that, I got that fire still. Wow. And I met, we went home disappointed. I broke night. I went to play soccer with my oh, neon fucking burgundy <laughs> hair. People are like, what the hell is wrong with you? I just can't remember. <laughs> the cracker snatch. <laughs> I, just, I, didn't, I didn't want to say that. I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> that? I'm still asking that question. What the fuck was that? Cracker snatch. <laughs> I wonder what happened to cracker snatch. I don't want to know. R.I.P. cracker snatch. <laughs> but you know, oh wow. And you try to stick it, stick there for a minute, but like, <laughs> <laughs> no, wow. Oh. We picked up and left, and man, but yeah, so. That 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 unit between us three, that there was that chemistry, like uh, the certain chemistry you feel when you meet people. Yeah, yeah. When you you know band together, I like to say that me and Greg have that chemistry. Yeah. Or respect, if you want to call that. Yeah. But there's other people that, how you say, um, that project that they're in it, they're in in it to do what, 
I don't know how to explain it. Um, they're in it to have fun, but yet still do a little work. Yeah, sure, sure. And they're in it for the long run. Yeah. It's not about, yeah, we get older, I get that, but I'm talking about back then. Yeah, sure. When we thought, you know, we want to be on MTV, we want to go a tour bus, when everything that they sold us, that now we know is bullshit. Yep, yep. You know, that's what we wanted. And we started gigging, and as we got started getting into a lot of different venues, Castle Heights, like Kevin, John, Thorman, you know, they were like the Black Thorn for us. Uh -huh, that was like uh -huh. the second home for that season. It was uh, Castle Heights and Black Thorn. I see, I see, sure. And then everything else in the middle of Manhattan, every club in Manhattan, we play uh, Limelight. We play Limelight. We play, we play, we play Limelight, CBGBs, okay. You know, Continental, uh, Coney on the High. We played all those places. I and see. most of them we did with Shaquan, and some of them we did with like Fed Up or... Um, uh, what bands uh, back then? I can't think about a band, uh, yeah. the name right now, but like there was a lot of bands that we kind of clicked. Sure. Just like the guys who were in the interviews, they all, they, that's their own click. Yep. We had our own click. Yep. People that we click in, not crew. But. Yeah, sure. So bands started seeing that we were getting shows everywhere. And like, hey, how you get that show? Was like, we, they just called on the NASA to play. Yeah. I said, can you get us in there? I was like, I'll try. And they got it. I told the promoter, well, well, yeah, yeah, sure, put him in. I put a lot of hardcore punk bands like Fed Up, uh, Head Wreck. Remember that? Head Wreck, yeah, I remember Head you know, Head Wreck? Kids are like punk, like, like punk oi bands, I would think. I see, okay. I never stuck to playing with just one style. Yeah, sure, sure. When I played a show, we had, like, the five soul, death metal, but they were more mixed. Yeah. You know, but, uh, they were like a mix of things. It was either hardcore, death metal, crash, uh, punk, and they all got along. We all uh -huh. got along, and that's kind of like how we built the friendship and me booking them everywhere. Yeah. And when I left that season, my own band, I left it because, you know, I, was, I just couldn't deal with the, the newer members. Sure. The, usually the person that does the least is the one that complains the most. Yeah. And I, I anyway, but... Uh, I left the band and I left all the paper, like all my lyrics and stuff to the band and and I, I we joined uh well, we did Reborn from Chaos after that. That's Reborn from band. Chaos, okay. That's and that was mostly Castle Heights and you know. And that's I started booking shows and that I, that was done in two thousand and something and I stopped playing, I just started booking shows everywhere. So I booked all the bands here in Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, a tour here, a tour there. And then uh, Diminish came out in 2003, 2002, 2003. It was like a Swedish death metal band that was drumming for it. Oh, okay. That band has a, had a lot of potential, but yeah. uh, the uh, the will was not there for some of the members. When you show up to a festival to play and your singer never shows up, that's a problem. So we asked the guys from Tomorrow's Victim, from Kevorkian, uh, which uh, shout out to Ramon too, even though... Know, Ramon from Kaborkin and, and Brad also. Uh, there was friends yeah. that even though we're playing the main stage of the, of the pyramid, no singer, and we're like, oh, you guys, karaoke time. You know? Yep. Oh, but we don't know that you sing whatever you want. We'll play the song and just go with it. Yep. And they're doing it. Just, we have fun. Yeah, sure. And the crowd is when they're thinking crazy, they enjoy it. That's what it's all about. And I left that band, and that's when Demise became active. Because oh, Demise, okay. Demise was my project from the 96 as a solo project. I see. It was a solo project the first time. I was recording time. the guitars, the drums, everything together. I was going to have some special guest vocals from bands, friends of mine to come in and do a song each. I see. And But then, you know, I got caught up in booking and my own. Yeah, sure. And, and then that's the first time ever I would play guitar in a band, my own band, Demise. Until then, it was drums, huh? Yeah. I see, I see. And I put a death tribute at the Pyramid. And um, that was my first show. It was a death tribute. I learned symbolic uh, guitar. Wow. And it was just me, um, uh, two members from Eden AD, which is with Jessica from my last one going, same thing, uh, and my old singer. And the place was packed. I booked Balamore, uh, Demise Sinai, and a couple other bands. And Richard Christie came out, you know, the drummer from Death, came out, and he was there. And, like, it was just packed all day. Wow. Like, supporting, and everybody was. We all knew each other. Yeah. Utopia Vanish, that was the other band. 
Oh, you t- and and they're from they're from the Bronx they're, too, yeah. right? They used to. I don't know if they're still around uh, and living in the Bronx, but uh, they were part of the Bronx scene. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Great fucking band. And they're like a little melodic, I think, right? They have keyboards and all that stuff, but they are good. It's wow. Like, it's like a more aggressive uh, children of Bodom or more aggressive um, Opeth. Oh, Except no playing Opeth, okay. It's like like melodic to the bone, but it's just it gives you it gives a punch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know that's where the my started for me as an active band. I said, "Fuck it, I want to play a death show." I booked death trips all the time. Yeah, I want to play a death trip, and that was it. And from there. What year was that? 2004. 2004. No, 2003. So. Oh, 2003. So I just okay. left the mesh towards the end of 2003. I see, I see, I see, I see. And that's when I went with that. And we play a lot of festivals, Ohio Death Fest. Like, we play with elites. You know, bands that I looked up to. Like, bands like, you know, Obituary. I think we play, if you see the flyer, I, I know all the major bands were there. Obituary, different stage. I'm not saying yeah. open up, but. Sure. And, like, we share a stage with so many bands that I never thought in my life that I have to see these you know, at home. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Look, I play with these guys. You know, some of them are, we are still friends with. Yeah. Like Sofocation, Mortician, uh, who else? Who else are we still talk to like from that, the, the main band? Uh, there's so many. Uh, Immolation. Uh, Immolation. Demolition Hammer. Uh, there's so many. Like, yeah. I'm blank right now. but Yeah, no, no, no. It's fine. But, you know, is you never expect to actually oh, my legacy. Let me shout out to Dan and company. The but, human um, eyes. The human eyes, obviously. The human eyes. Yes, the human eyes. One of my top favorite. Eternal bleeding. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing the how music get us all together. Even though we're not tight. Yeah, yeah. But when we see each other, hey, what's going on? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that's the beauty of it. You want to feel comfortable when you walk in for the first time to a show that you've never been to. And you recognize somebody. Yeah. I know when I hit you. Yeah. He hit me back. Like, hey, we were hitting each other. Back yeah. to back. Like, <laughs> like chicken blanket. You know, like, you know. But then you turn around, you, that, that, that fresh, that new, like that, that face that you recognize makes it better. Yeah, definitely. You know? For like, sure. Especially going to like shows like for the first time, like your irate and DSI. You remember that show? Though? I remember that. Yeah. Like, Where was that, that at? Man. At uh, Coney Island High. Oh, that was at Coney Island High. Oh, man, that was oh, a crazy okay. show. That man. show so was... So much went on in that show. That split was... Middle, that, that, that show was split in the middle. All the long hair, which is the metalheads on this yeah. side. All the hardcore kid on this side. Yeah. Metalhead comes in. <laughs> so chaos. So good. I saw Gigi swinging by. And, oh! and then she kept going. <laughs> you know, I saw Mel there, so I think I bumped into on, 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 on the mosh pit on that one, too. Yeah. You know, but it was just amazing how everything has grown. Yeah. Yeah. Because from that show, I never noticed the difference between the crowds. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Because I never looked at it. Uh-huh. But when I see everybody on one side and all the hardcore kids on the other side, I was like, like, what? How many fights broke up? Yo, like, too many to count. It was like, I think, I think it was, like, was kind of like, the metal version of like the like the heavy music version of like the outsiders. Like, yes, yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. Like and I, I stood by the metal side, even though, you know, I, I love both, but it's yeah. like, okay, I'm here, not knowing what's happening. Yeah. But I'm like, okay, I'm just here, like whatever. And oh shit. Wow. All you need is Tom Ryan going, What it's crazy, but shows like that is just epic how you just walk into a place and you don't know nobody and then you do bump into somebody or you don't and eventually next show you go you see the same people there you're like hey you start communicating uh-huh you know uh-huh. and it's cool but you know it's like it's war yeah that's why I, that whole theme of ecw so why if i let you for the Bronx, because that's the attitude that I believe a lot of these bands from the Bronx have. Yeah. Like, they're trying to get out there. And some of them have made it past out there, but some of them that are still, like, here, like, home base, they're still doing their thing, and they're still going out there fighting and enjoying what they're doing without letting it J J how do you say, you? Yeah, J, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, because this industry will... Get you jaded real quick. Absolutely. Getting with people will get you jaded real quick. 
And it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to like keep a, a circle tight. Like I'm surprised a lot of the people that you interview already are still friends. Yeah, I know. Because is like I said, they bump into each other. Like Barry, you know, Barry's awesome. You know, uh, Martin is awesome. Fucking Phil is awesome, obviously. You know, I never thought that we would. I'm I'm saying in the sense like they're in their own world. Yeah. I'm in my own world. I never thought that we would get to know each other. Yeah, sure. And still, and be cool about it instead of fighting. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, sure. Like, it's like mixing Fahrenheit, the crop, Fahrenheit 451 with District 9. Even though they came from the same thing, mm-hmm. it's two different worlds. Very different worlds, yeah. You know, but they still work. Yeah. And I enjoy that. I love Fahrenheit. If you see a YouTube video on 1998, you'll see me jumping for the state diving from Fahrenheit. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> first time doing it. They caught me. <laughs> That's the guy. Uh, That's the first time I was state diving. Wow. You know, um, so, so who who all was in um, Demise when Demise first came together? The first in 2003, ending up 2003, was my uh, Alex from The Room from Chaos. Uh-huh. Uh, Leo from Alkaline's Gun or Eden AD and Eric from Eden AD. I see. And myself, obviously. But, um, then, but I have a tendency of just borrowing musicians from different groups yeah. to get something done. Yeah. And that's what we've been doing. Like, you know, we don't have a set person. Like, hey, listen, can you, we have this show. You want to play with us? Okay. You know? Yeah. So far, you know, we have had very quality people. Not all, but quality people in the band. We had Paul from uh, The Human Eyes to play when we were uh, Music Unlimited. Yeah. He was playing with us for a minute. Um, we had some other people that were, you yeah, know, they were okay. You know, I don't mean to bring them down, but I mean work-wise. Work yeah, day. sure, sure, sure. People that contribute, people that put, you know, talent. You know, it's like, they didn't just go in there and be like, give me the sheet so I can learn them or like they want like work. Okay, let's try this song. Let's try this. Let's yeah. try that. You know, and that's what you need. You need. You can't get stuck in your own herd. Like that's my song. I want it to go that way. No, you know, let everybody contribute. Yeah. And after that, it was just uh, we we had another drummer, but that's the guy who was recording in that CD. That was okay. supposed to be a CD, but because of that drummer. We were recording where obituary records, so Joe Hollows, shout out to Joe, Joe Hollows, uh, ah, okay. um, recording studio, and he has a film, movie film studio, too. Yeah. He told me, he's a he's a brother of ours, he was like, oh, go to the studio and record, go, go record for free. Yeah. Who's just going to say no? So, the, the thing was, we were supposed to be there at a certain time, we got there at a certain time, but the drummer showed up whenever he felt like. We were supposed to be there at one in the afternoon, he showed up at seven. Oh, Damn. The first day. And Max, shout out to Max, he's the engineer. He plays with uh, Generation Kill now. Okay. Um, he uh, he was the engineer. He was pissed off. And I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Dude. You know how you have grown-ass men have to apologize, apologize for another grown-ass man? And <laughs> I'm sorry. He's like, he's red. He's like, yo, I'm sorry. And I called Joe. I told him, like, Joe Holloway. I told him that. I'm sorry, dude. This happened. He's like, oh, don't worry. Don't worry. The following time, we day, a couple of days later, we went back. And he started setting up his drum, and we're like, and I'm like, dude, dude. And Max is sitting there like, and he's like, okay, I'm ready. And that's the reason he's not in the band anymore. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So instead of recording the full album, we can only record because of the time restriction. I see. Recorded, what, three songs? There's a fourth song that didn't... He, he did something on the drum that didn't sound right, so he didn't put it there. I see, I see. So that's why it's like an EP type of thing. Sure. And I would like to record the other songs, but, you know, it is what it is. And I'm, I have zero tolerance when it comes to people, people ego. Yeah. I might have an ego myself, but I don't even know what probably I do, but there's a, there's a time and a place for things, and this is not a job. We're doing this because... We enjoy it. Yeah. But when somebody comes in and try to be a Yoko Hono about the whole band, you know, <laughs> you know to me, you got to go. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care if you're a good person. I don't care if I know you. You got to go. It's just, 
It's not that hard. This is not that hard. What's hard is going out there playing because you got to be professional. But in the room, it's us. Yeah, that's right. Communication. But, you know. Um, hmm? So what, what years did Greg and Mel join Demise? Good when, question. When was that? Yeah, why? Oh, Since I don't smoke weed, my memory's a little hazy. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mel, when did you join? I joined in uh, 2008. Um, yeah, I, I joined, um, yeah, about, uh, what was it? Like, it was, like, right on the end of, um, you know, felt like when Ferrell broke up, like, I think, like, two days after that, I get a call from Gio asking me if I want to, like, you know, travel for the band and everything like that. So, went to the studio, travel, travel for the band, made it. And uh, so, and I, I think my first show, because, like, we, we did, like, a whole big revamp in the band. Yeah. It was, like, you know, like, we, we just got, we got a lot of new people. We got, um. Yeah, a couple of, you know, George and Shane from yeah, Diary of, of the Mind, shout out to them. So we, we had them, and, uh, you know, we I think we start, I started gigging with the Mind around that time of, I think it was probably about like, uh, what was it? Uh, I think 2009. April, 2009, April, 2009 yeah. The first tour we did. The first tour, wow, yeah. Okay. The, first, the first show that we did was April 2009. And, then, like, you know, we, we played at played the Brooklyn, uh, what was that, the with like the Williamsburg Music Hall. Okay, okay, yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, That was the first show, and then like you know, we we did our first tour in two thousand and nine, and uh, we went through the like, I don't even, yeah, like that, that was an epic tour though. Yeah, it was. It was where, 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 where did where did where did Demise tour? We went down the East Coast, all the way down to, down to Florida. Oh, really? Okay. Did, did we go to Midwest or West Coast? Did we know that was? We, we went to we went to the, we went to the Midwest. We went to we went to Chicago. Then we finished it off in Milwaukee. Yeah, you're, we went all the way around. Like wow, we, we did both. We did, did we played the Steel Pit. That was it, right? That was the first 2009, right? That, no, that was 2011. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay, my bad. 2011, wow. we played wow. Steel Pit. Yeah. That yeah, was fun too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Good point. Yeah, I forgot Greg was in there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Greg was, Greg was in the band by yeah, that Yeah, by that time. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's like a third. Yeah, uh, yeah, second third. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Wow. Um, so before we keep going with Demise, uh -huh. um, Greg, let's hear about your time with Golden Mintis, and then I want to hear about both of your times with Farrell um, before, you know, more more Demise. So, so Greg, yeah, so, why don't you talk about Golden Mintis? Yeah, so as I mentioned before, I found the, like, the post on MySpace that they were looking, so... I messaged them, uh, helped my cousin to translate it for me. That's <laughs> 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 right, so, uh, stupid. And then when I went, we set up a date for the audition. Uh, I went over there and said I was waiting under the train for a while. Finally, Barry came to pick me up. Went over there, I played that, that one song, then like, jammed a little bit, solos and stuff like that. Improvised. They, they were impressed. They were like, Shit, he played the whole song right with them. Uh, they went outside to talk. They said, okay, welcome in the band. Was, uh, Barry, Ramon, Frankie was in the drums, and Manny was the bass player. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Back then. So, yeah, so I joined the band. Obviously, I had to learn the material, so I started uh, learning Ramon, the guitar parts, everything, and then started uh, writing my solos because we were in process. They were already in process of recording the, the album. Oh, okay, okay, uh, okay. So, so the guitars were already recorded on the album. I only recorded the, the guitar solos. I see, I see, I see, yeah. I see. So, uh, so by the time I got to recording, they were still recording with the vocals, I believe. And, and my solos. Yeah. So we just go and yeah, play to the uh, studio and, and recording a couple of times. So yeah, a few months in, I played the first show with them. Where, uh, where was that show at? Uh, Do you I remember? Don't remember. Oh, okay, okay, I that's fine. Remember. Venues, I'm not gonna remember. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> exact names and locations. But yeah, we started playing multiple shows, multiple shows, traveling upstate, Long Island, uh, we play CBGBs twice with me. Uh -huh. I don't know if they played before there. I think I, it's just twice. So yeah, I think yeah, just with you then. Yeah, so, so that's that. Uh, yeah, then we we uh, finished working on the album. We we made the copies. Uh, I was in charge of the album uh, artwork, so I I basically designed it. Oh, okay. I. I was in charge of ordering CDs and also was self-published by the band. 
and funny story about the premiere show. We were gonna play the premiere show, and a week earlier I go to Vader show in Manhattan somewhere. Uh, meeting party. What year? 2006. Vader? Most likely it had to be in uh, Urban Plaza? No, 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 it was something else. No, I think it was in Manhattan. No, 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 it was smaller like venue than, than huh. Urban Plaza. I don't know. It's it was in a city, though, right? Uh, either city or Brooklyn. I didn't think about that. Comes to mind, but I'm not really sure. So. Probably it could be the. So so, I'm there, and then my Polish friends like, come to Moscow. I'm like, I'm too old for this. But they keep insisting. So I go, and then sure enough, I, I, I think it was this list. Oh no! And again, it's between two people, and huh. immediately bomb. Oh, oh man. and I'm like, oh shit! I have a show in next in a week. Yeah, yeah. No, Sunday show was gonna be less than a week. Friday or Saturday. Uh-huh. And so first thing we go outside and find the like like the, the uh, store with vegetables. They had ice ice <laughs> cups. Uh, I buy that and do a home train. Then at work, I, uh, I was working on the computer, so so I just figured I'm gonna just buy oranges and and I work with mouse. Yeah, I couldn't even. Do keyboards, I just was switching oh, and I just sque- squeezing orange. Wow. All week I was just wow. working, 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 working. Uh-huh. It was still hurting, but I was able to play the show. I had wireless, so I jumped off the stage, went to the mosh with my guitar. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. It was, was fun. Uh, we had some Polish moonshine. <laughs> some between the bands. Oh, man. So it was great. It was great. Wow. Yeah, so a few months later, I, 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 I departed from the band. And then, as I said, I was like, uh, I, I have work, I have this, that, I'm, I'm not going to play for a while, or maybe I'm, just, uh, I'm not going to play anymore. Yeah. Uh, my goal was to, to have at least one album under my belt, so, so, sure. so like, official. So I accomplished that, and then, like, Oh, yeah, this, this has been fun. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, Paul from the Human Rights started talking about this project, and I, I believe I, I already jammed with him before. You guys were jamming at Far Rock? Or yeah, you know? no, we were, yeah, but we were going to Mount Vernon before. Oh, okay. oh you are going to Mount Vernon before? Yes. Oh, so okay. We were jamming there, then we then continued, then we started doing this again. So so that, that was Far Rock away. Started, uh, Mel also joined uh, in, and we played one show, uh, Lucky 13. After that, we kind of uh, fell apart. Oh, yeah. so it was a short lived. Uh, yeah, 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 Gio was calling me earlier to like, if I wanted to join the Mice, I was like, I'm not gonna play anymore, I think. I'm gonna work on other things, but then I started, like I said, itching for like. I miss it. I miss yeah. it. I miss yeah. it. And stage yeah. and playing and and, 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 and and writing music and, and jamming out. So, so I reach out again to Gio. You know, he still needs guitarists and he did so. We, and then I remember I, I came to the audition and he was like, okay, so can you play something? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm like, uh, you guys know my work. You, you. No, I don't remember. Yeah, that. so so I'm like, so, so I, I, I need to play for you guys. And he was insisting for a little bit, but then he gave up. <laughs> so we just well, you made it. Talked, in, that's all we just guys. talked, and then we set up. I'm gonna be joining, and then and start learning material, and we take it from there. Uh, okay, and, yeah, yeah, and, but that kind of came off like. Yeah, I, I don't think I, 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 I have one. to. I have to yeah. jump. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. You see that one for you. That's funny. It's yeah. good to know the different perspective. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, Mel, do you have anything else to add about Farrell? I know. I know it's a short-lived thing, but anything yeah. that that Greg didn't cover already? Okay. Yeah. Well, Farrell, like, you know, I was, like after I school, I was Marsh. I got you. Oh but, but yeah, like I was, I was out of scene for a while. Just like you know, you know, just one show, just chilling out, doing my thing, everything like that. So, you know, I remember like, like, like Ken, the drummer, was talking about they was looking for a singer and everything, and like you know, and you know, I, I went to the studio with Four Rockaway, 
and it was uh, it was Ken, it was Anthony who who eventually like he ended up playing for Demise, playing base for Demise, I don't know, Demise, Demonized. Oh, Demonized. Uh, okay, and it yeah. was Paul, and you know we jammed out together, everything like that, and you know, so then you know I joined after that, so you know I, I was like, okay, you know, by like, the school got this, you know, got this going on, everything like that, so we're jamming out, and then like you know we need a second guitar player, so that's where Greg came in. And uh, so we was so rehearsing and uh, and fought Rockaway and stuff like that. And it was like I didn't do vocals for like a long time, so I was a little choppy. Yeah. So it was like it was kind of like a gradual, like week by week by week by week by week. Break. It was just like I started, you know, get my chops a little bit, and you know, so like we're you know basically like you know just jamming out, and then you know it was like time when I learned. So I, you know when songs was ready, I wrote lyrics for them and everything, and then uh, we had you know we had our first show at Lucky Thursday. It was. Um, it was us and uh, who, who was that band? Uh, Andro Andro Morphis for Salia, I think that's that oh, was that name. Oh, Joseph. Joseph uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we played the show with them, <laughs> and it was funny. It was like we played the show. It was funny. Like you know, I I basically like I, I took the mic into the pit. I almost knocked Kent's set over. Yeah, it was very tight. Though. It was very tight. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so we really got into it. Everything like the that. The old location. <laughs> yeah, the old location. The old like yeah. when it was like very compact. Yeah. And like so so you know, we played it, you know, you know, finished the show, everything like that and then all of a sudden like afterwards it was just like everybody was like, you know, it was like the reverse role Voltron effect. Everybody's like <laughs> Yeah, and uh, on the way back I, I had all my gear uh, not my old band's gear in the in the S U V. Yeah. And my car it was old car. Uh I'm driving on BQE and it died. Oh and, no. And, and, like cracked uh, uh, the case casing and, and Oil on the, you know, and so, 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 truck came, put it on the top, and we drove home with all the drums and amps and guitars <laughs> and, and the, on the truck. <laughs> oh, man, it was so unfortunate. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, Joseph cleaned the mice at, at, at the beginning. Was he that? came from BR, he crashed at my place, Joseph. I remember, yeah. And he joined the mice for a brief moment, but his style is totally different. He's into the slam like noisy thing yeah like, like the chaotic course yeah, he lives ah, in so see. that's what we need but I've known him for awesome dude yeah, he's a cool guy yeah ah, he's a cool guy um so why don't uh Mel and Gio why don't you all talk about the first tour some and then all of you all can talk about the second I tour I talk about that yeah Mel let's uh, hear my uh, perspective uh, is totally different than his oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they will hear yeah, his yeah. too Gio <laughs> so yeah yeah first tour it was it was hilarious like you know with we're talking about this, we're talking about this, you know, it's other band, you know, not going to mention them. Okay. Yeah. They, Got they, it. Yeah. They're not going to mention them. So, yeah. So, so we're on tour and like, you know, so it's like, it's like, you know, we're, we're driving down and everything like that. And we're seeing all these areas that we've never seen before. So it was like, so first up, so we, we go up, I think the first show that the place about the talent farm in uh, Hollywood, Florida. Okay. So it was cool. It was like, it was like an internet, like kind of live show, everything like that. So it was kind of it was fun to do, you know. We had you know we had some people down there. We just uh, you know it was, it was like you know we had what like one girl like that was like hit, that was there to see Geo, like she ended up like like you know all like a couple other guys are trying to hit on her everything like that. It was like falling flat on their faces and everything. <laughs> and it was like you know they, yeah they were they were they were going hard. They were they were going vicious. And then like you know people in the other band they were, like we we going to the next album. I wish my whole thing I wanted to like stay in like. In, in like Fort Lauderdale, because the thing was, is that you know my you know my my sister, like both of my sisters were down in Florida. One like oh, went wow. to Fort Lauderdale, and the other was in Miami. So I wanted to like have thing like you know like us like you know we go down you know after the show, get a hotel, uh-huh. meet up with my, my sister, go down, hang with my other sister. We just chill about in like South Beach, just chill, having a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were like, oh, we're going to Orlando. That's fine. So I'm like, you see why we're not mentioning them? So, I see. I yeah, see. So, 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 so yeah. So, and so like we, so we get to, uh, we get to Orlando. And these guys are just like acting like total rock stars. Like, like they was like this shit don't stink at all. Yeah, was like a sewage, a sewage pipe was coming out their ass. So, so we get there and it's like you know, you know, like the people in it, they just started acting like tough guy. Well, yeah. one guy started acting like tough. He was a big like you know. Bass player guy, he's acting like a tough guy, stuff like that. So, so you know, he he just, he just acting up all over the place. So like, like long story short, you know, 
Gio almost destroys this guy. <laughs> and, like, we're just like, we're like, yo, like, I don't know how we're going to get to, like, get through the rest of the tour. So we're just, so we're just like, we're kind of like strategize and everything like that. So we go, so we go, like, we go down to, like, the, the whole, like, their hotel room. Before that, yeah. I said, oh, fire you. Step outside, my fire, oh, fire you. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they, got, they got me to the point where, wow. uh, like, you know. Now, we, we, is this band from New York? I don't no, care no, about the name of the band. Okay, okay. All right, so so they they probably never gone up against someone who's come up on the yeah, <laughs> in New York before. I said it before. I have zero tolerance. I can put up with so much, but like, dude, like you know how I you both seen how I am. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm yeah, not like I used to. I I talk to them yeah. and I listen. How do you feel about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you yeah, feel yeah. about this individual? Yeah. I don't go like, oh, you're out. Or this one. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm very, but those guys, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he was about to unleash the Bronx on him. He, he, was like, he was about to be unleashed. And it's funny because people never see me. Everybody that knows me or yeah. don't know that side of me. Yeah. And they don't think I'm capable. But that's why I say I let you give, I give you as much as I need to, for you to know about me. Yeah, sure. Because like everybody does. Yeah. Right? Those guys, oh my god, dude. I'm glad you're saying it, not me, because I didn't make you sound like I'm a egotistical bully or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, please, you said, that up? girl that was there, she was the promoter that she wanted to get with me, but I said, what? You said, no, it's all good. Why? Because you had a girlfriend. Thank you. <laughs> just to make that clear, you <laughs> 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 uh, were, were y'all stuck with them for the entire tour? We were stuck with them for the entire tour. Oh, yeah, shit. It was okay. Like, yeah, like you know, so, like you know, some people, like some people in that band, I consider cool, but like you got some funny guys in the band, some pretenders. You uh-huh. know, like, they know who they are. Yeah. So yeah, so like yeah, so so but, like after after the thing, after like you know, we're about to like you know, like there's about to be a fight. <clears throat> we go down to the hotel room, right? So we knock on the door, and oh, the, like remember the big, the big strong, like the big like tough guy. Yeah. He answers the door with the chair door. What do you guys want? <laughs> and like, and like, it's funny, like, you know, like, don't even look at scared, and like, the other one, like, he's hiding behind the hamp. And we're like, we're like, yo, like, dude, we're just, we're just trying to talk here. We just, try, we just want to talk. That's how we're not going to fight. We're going to talk. So, yeah, so, yeah, so, like, we, uh, so, so we talked, everything like that. We stayed, like, you know, we patched things up, kind of. Yeah. And we stayed on the tour, everything like that. And we played, played Florida. Yeah, we did. We did, we did our thing. Of, and we I destroyed that show. There's a video. It's called Kill Be Kill. Yeah. yeah. That video, it was, they put, they edited it on their own thing. And it was awesome. But the reason behind how good we played that, that, sh- that one show is because they were arguing with us about yeah. who's going to headline. Oh. Because there was people there and they wanted to go first. Yeah. So, uh, did they go first? No, they wanted to go last. Oh, they wanted to go last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they went in, last. And if you see the video, you're going to see the crowd. Midway, his homeboy, some guy he met over there, <laughs> all up on Mel. We call him Midway because he's like, yo, trying to get that Mel to sing. Go, the same thing. He was like, what's <laughs> that? The was going crazy. Everyone was going crazy. And we just gave the Bronx attitude full effect just because these fuckers pissed me <laughs> Yeah, you know? It was extra motivation for sure. Yo, wow. like, we went there, like, instead of fighting them or whatever you want to call it, like, we just took it and put it on the stage. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, music. sure. And you could see the, like, how angry we were. I, I broke the snare. I punched out. <laughs> <laughs> like, when I was doing the last video, I just punch. I punch a hole in my own snare. Yeah. And um, then they went on and everybody left. Yeah. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> but it's, it's the logic is like I don't care if you're headlining. I don't. I, I don't care. I just want to yeah. play. You know. But when you you have to treat people with respect and exactly. Uh-huh. We all in this together. So what, why you have to be better, feel like you're better than I am? Yeah. Like, we have to look out for one another. That's what we do. Yeah. Yeah. And we try to do that with them, but. Yeah, the camaraderie was all. They're they were doing yeah. a different level from us. We're from the ghetto, the Bronx, and they're from, I'm not going to say from where because then points the band. But 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 not the Bronx. Yeah, <laughs> the Bronx, yeah. <laughs> Just because you have a backyard doesn't mean you're better than I am. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah, yeah was, for real. It was total, like, you know, a total rock star attitude. These, these uh-huh. guys, they were just like, you know, yeah, you would have thought they would have came off of Castle Donington or, <laughs> or like Monsters of Rock Tour or something like that. That's the way it was acting. 
<laughs> so oh. the, the tour it went well to a certain extent and uh, we had yeah. a lot of fun besides those situations like they kind of humbled themselves after a while because yeah. they had no choice yeah that's we right were in the same freaking band with them and that was it yeah we went to uh, illinois we met with don decker who passed away from anal blast yeah the brother wow. from the club but he passed away a while back you know um we played the show it's not that private but it was a good turnout uh, then we went to the Hash Fest. The Hash Fest, yeah. The first one. They had Rockstar. They had they had a section like this big for us with like spread and everything. Wow. Like, Damn, yeah. I gotta do more contracts like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, with burgers oh, and everything. Man. We went out with a lot of Jungle Rocks and all these other bands that were from uh, the area and good response. We had a blast in that place. It was fun. And yeah. we played where after that. I, I, that was the last day of the tour. Oh, yeah, and then we just drove back. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And then the second tour, 2011, right? Yeah, yes. So to okay. me, that was... Didn't we go to play the Wisconsin before? Yeah, this guy, man. That was the first one, yeah. The first show. You got us a ticket. This guy right here. We we got a book for, uh, what was it? Um, the Hespress 2. The part, it was a Hespress 2. Yeah, yeah it was 2010, yeah. yeah. And in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and... Um, it's fifteen hour drive, right? Yeah. For that one thing, <laughs> <laughs> you go through Jersey, whoop, whoop, state trooper, <laughs> and you know Mel and I will go way back. So we joke to a certain level that I know he's not being offended if he does. He tells me. Yeah. But I'm like, yo, Mel, don't move. Leave your hands on your things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's Jersey. Yep. <laughs> and it's Jersey. Yep. I'm not that, li- I'm not that light either. I'm like, yeah. just keep your hands on your seat. <laughs> and the guy goes, the state trooper goes, um, you know, I stopped you. And Greg goes, I was speeding. <laughs> <laughs> and he got the ticket. I said, we're going to split it. And like, this, we just left. Like, he asked this question where you guys are going because we have all these, like, like we're moving. Yeah. In the, in yeah. the back, all the speakers, the drums, all the stuff. Uh-huh. And he let us go. He gave us Greg a ticket and let us go. Yeah, it was <laughs> fun. We got to Wisconsin like, in record breaking time. time. Yeah. He's the only driver. You know, wow. And matter of fact, like, when he was driving, like, when the cops stopped him, he was like, Yeah, you were doing 79. <laughs> or if he's like, Girls, like, Oh, I'll let you do a 90. <laughs> 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 Yo, man. Wow. We got to Wisconsin and we destroyed that place. It was fun because a lot of people, even though they, they don't know us that well, yeah. but we get it, they're getting into because the first one and the second one. Yeah. And the, we get better reaction from people outside of New York than in the own, our own backyard. Uh, people that don't know our shit will mosh and. Drop the beat, like in North Carolina. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he loved that. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> Yo, tell them about that one. You, you yeah. Tell them about that one. Yeah, let's hear it. Oh, 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 about North Carolina? Yeah. Oh man, it was, it was crazy. This man. was on the <laughs> second tour or first? No, tour? the first. What's the first? This was the first tour. It was the first tour. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 we, yeah, we yeah. went to battle with these guys. Uh, All right, sorry, you know, yeah. So he, you know, we had this guy <laughs> like you know, like he was saying, started to sing for the other, like for the other band, like yeah. the, like the band that was playing before us, and he just, he just like he's doing, he's carrying some room, like <laughs> show the room. The guy goes on stage. He's like, we drove through cornfield. What is this corn? Nothing in front. We get there. And the town is like dead. Yeah. Uh-huh. Then we get Desolate. to the place, and it's like, man, the promoter was never there. Oh my god. That, that leads to the black cherry. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we get there, and okay, there's another band there, and we're there, but there's a few people there, and the guy goes, "I'll let you, I'll let you guys play if you got the owner of the, of the venue," but the promoter never showed up. Yeah. All right. So the first the the first band goes on. It's a yeah. big brawling tube. He's like this. Yeah. And you know how in, in like in techno EDM music they have to drop the beat? Yep, 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 yep. So they play <laughs> <laughs> They play <laughs> Alright! <laughs> <laughs> and oh, we were like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. Talking about being genuine, authentic, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I was like, I've never seen that in my life. <laughs> oh, in the middle of a breakdown, you just the beat. And they start going, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Yo. 
This guy couldn't stop crying. You know? That was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Man. You know? I mean, they were good. Just yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That just caught you off guard. You know, yeah, it all. I'm in North Carolina in the middle of the cornfield, and this is what I'm coming to see. Like, I didn't expect that. You know? You know? But, um, oh, man. And then we went to the, from there we went to Toledo. What's it, Toledo? Toledo. Toledo. Yo. How was that? Listen, I'm from the hood. <laughs> I'm from the hood. And I was scared. Yo, it was crazy. Like, so we get over there. I'm like, wow, what kind of, what kind of is this? And it's, like, and it's like, it's just like real streets. So like, people, it was like, it was like a hippie, it was like a yuppie bookstore. Uh-huh. It's a squatter. Okay. Like, you know, uh, squatter. Yes, it's yes, like, yes, not yes. a yuppie, but a hip, like a hippie bookstore slash club. So we get in there and like, we're like, you know, this is like, this is. Like, this is still cold. Like, guys walking outside, he has those shoes on. Yeah, that, that, like, almost the spot. So we're like, okay, this this is not this is not starting off good. So, yeah. so, we, so we get there and everything like that. He's like, listen, all the beds canceled, but if you want to stay with us, Dude. you're more than welcome to do so. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, no, 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 no. And then, like, the, the other guy's like, yeah, sure, we'll stay. I'm like, you <laughs> how every so, horror movie starts exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. so yeah so, so we're chilling in there it's, it's crazy it's like you know like, like we're, we're, it's like the place is like messed up and these guys are sitting on the couches with like no shirts on smoking weed just chilling and I'm just and the whole time I'm like yo I, somehow I just want to get the fuck out of here I, I, I just want to leave man so yeah so like so they, they, they're there and tell me why like, remember I told you, Toledo, Ohio, <laughs> Total Hood, they don't have a lock on the door. No lock. No knob, no lock. <laughs> yeah, that's no, the front door. The garage door was cracked open sideways like this. Wow. That's where we lo- like try to load up our equipment to. Yo. Wow. So, so we stayed in that hellhole. <laughs> and... All of a sudden, you know, like we, I couldn't get a reception inside to like call my mother. Yeah. So I go outside of the of the place to call my mother, and like I remember I had like a I had a red, white, blue academic shirt. Yeah. So you know who I was begging for the Crips, Bloods, or whatever. <laughs> so so I'm outside. This guy's like like you know like the bike that Debo stole <laughs> in Friday. Yeah, yeah. They're riding on bikes like that, swerving back and forth, back and forth. Just looking at me. I'm on the phone. When I'm talking to my mom. I'm just like, what this girl? And they're just swerving back and forth, talking on walkie talkies and everything. I hope there's crew all world outside. So, so I, I'm like, I'm going to jail in your gym. Why are they like looking at me like that? He goes, yo, it's your shirt. Yo, go back inside, change your shirt. I'm like, yo, that's right. So, so I go inside. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm hoping these guys, I'm hoping we leave before these guys come to the, come to the doors, guns drawn, trying to take us all out for a shirt that I wore. So, so, yeah, so, so we, so we leave and we're, at, so we're, we're at the gas station. A block yeah. away from, from the, block, the, block yeah. away, yeah. We're at the gas station. So this, this homeless guy comes, yeah, man, I need some food, blah, 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 yeah. I need some food. Where you tell me I can get something to eat. Get out. We're like, yo, we don't have any resources to give you. But if you want, you can go to the bookstore down the block. Yeah. And they'll, like, they'll feed like, you. Mm-hmm. He goes, wait. What that? The heavy bookstore? I'm like, yeah. He goes, fuck that. And he just starts walking away. <laughs> like, curses. Yo, yo, they, they know. They know. They know. Like, yo, yo, what what the <laughs> like, yo, holy oh, shit, wow. man. Yo, okay. I had to stand guard. I had my extendable baton. That yeah. Was, yeah. Him. I, they all, everybody was crashing. I'm not the door. Like, when the, so first hand that the, the first hand that comes to the, he's getting clocked. <laughs> he up the whole freaking night. Just like, wow. Just it off the place. That's wow. Oh, that's how bad it was. Like, it was horrible. Yeah. And we come from the Bronx. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we already have the intuition. Like, that kid that was in the, uh-huh, the bicycle, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. checking him out. He's like, blah, blah, blah. I'm on the phone on the other side. And then next thing I know, he comes back and goes around the corner. And then. <laughs> I'm like talking, he's talking to his mother on the phone, I'm over there, blah, blah, blah. And I look, I look over there, it's like fucking 10, 15 kids. Oh, it's Holly, yeah. Looking at him, I'm like, yo, <laughs> your shirt, oh bro. <laughs> wow. It was, I've seen it in movies, but yeah. I've never seen it in person. I've never experienced that, yeah. So, so that was the creepiest uh, experience 
on tour then, I guess, huh? That's right, yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 It was, uh, now you could laugh about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was uh, I was happy to have gotten out of place a lot. That's all. <laughs> that, that's all. Okay. Well, got, we got out of place a lot. That, that hippie bookstore, they probably got bodies buried underneath no. there. Probably like some <laughs> Joey Gacy stuff going over there. <laughs> The guy's like, well, I'm cooking something. You guys want to talk? No. <laughs> Why does it smell like human? <laughs> they, had to no, scary. they were like ninja cats. You're sitting on the couch going, <laughs> on the, the white one and a little gray one. Yeah. Wow. So that was on the first tour then yeah. too, huh? The second yeah. tour you, you didn't go back there for the second tour, huh? <laughs> no. No. Well, we, you know, you experienced a lot of stuff. The second tour, like, what was the most dangerous thing we went through? Well, was it a state? Dangerous. Like what? Did you say? I mean, no, he said something. No, I don't think. I think like the, thinking, I the girls in California. Which one? The girls actually. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> you know, the, the two girls are like, like remember, like I think that like I don't, like I'm not, I don't know their names, so like I'm not gonna mention their name. But like, I think they did porn. I don't know what you're talking about. What show? The Steel Pit? It was Steel Pit, yeah. They met us after the show. They, yeah. they were there. No, I knew those girls. The blonde one? Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, Sarah. He used to play in a band with me from Crying Loud. Oh, okay, okay. Why? What about them? What happened? No, 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 no I, I thought it was a situation that you, you said like... Oh, no, the, 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 the basis... <laughs> 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 so my friend you know she came out to see us and uh i'm wearing a raiders hat yeah yeah on a steel pit steelers every time i went to the bar to get something to drink they ignored, ignored me i didn't get it because i'm not yeah. a football player I just yeah swear. sure 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 yeah and they were just ignoring me i'm like okay fuck it so i bought up yeah and my friends came in well and then uh the bassist at the time uh he was uh yo Who's that girl? Who's that girl? Hook me up. Not my friend, the one that she came with. Yeah, sure. And I'm like, I went to her. I said, let's pray. Up. Let's do a prank. I said, tell her, like, tell, talk to your friend and tell her that she wants to do stuff with this guy. Yeah, yeah. She goes, why? Wow, I just want to see what he's going to do. Because some people talk. Yeah, and sure. And they be like, here, do it. They were like, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> And that's what happened. So that's what the, he's laughing about. But I think you missed that part. That she, I knew the girl. She's, uh, she's still a friend of mine. She's a oh, okay, gotcha. Like, that, that was, was funny. The, that was the prank. And we yeah. did kick that. We killed that, that show, too. Like, Greg is always on point with when he comes to this plane and doing his screaming and shit. I can't yeah. scream even my life depends on it. So. That was the only thing that the owner, I think, he said, I see one person by the stage, I'm shutting down the show. Like, much be what's. What show was that? that? What show was that? Was that in California? Yeah. The oh. second tour? Yeah, yeah. It was like, no, much be allowed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. How, how like long did that last? Like that, yeah. No, no. no, no people respected it. Okay. Right. Like, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everybody well, had to behave. I wow. think it's because I was wearing a Raiders hat. Oh, I yeah. see. <laughs> That's why. Ah, I see. And I'm like, wow. I'm going there. Give me some water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most dangerous. Like in, in Colorado, we we played oh. it at like kind of like a White House clubhouse. Yeah. You know, like, this guy. Right, yeah. He was Shout a biker. Shout out to Fritz and uh, uh, I forgot her. I'm cheating on people. Fritz, I'm still friends with him. He's a biker. He's up from Scorpio and MC. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. And uh, awesome family. Uh, yeah, very cool. We went and played at their warehouse. They invited some other bands, and it was a great show. A good show. Yeah. Okay, turnout. They supported us and everything. They paid us, and then instead of sending us to a hotel, we crashed at their house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but this guy, he was paralyzed down the way. He had a trike, so he was on the wheelchair. He got into the wheelchair, pulled himself over, dismantled this. Screws it to the back of his trike. Wow. And he goes, follow me. We, he, and he takes off. We, I start driving. The door is open. <laughs> well, it's running because he's still not in the car. <laughs> he's jumping in. <laughs> Chase this guy through. Uh, Following to his house. Yeah. Uh, wow. Denver. Denver. Denver yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and he goes through the city 90. Oh my God. And I'm trying <laughs> that van to, to follow him. Uh, yeah. We made it, but I was. I can't make sharp turns. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but then we ended up by staying at his house and they fed us. They fed us. Yeah. He had like dogs. Like, I, I, don't, oh, yeah. I don't know the names of dogs. Like, yeah. 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 Dogs, yeah. yeah. He was like Jesus' dog over here. Like, all the dogs were on top of him. And he's there he goes. I got a piece of stuff blowing in the dark. <laughs> and I feel like beer. So, so I put a little bit in the glass and they were like. <laughs>
Wow. Yeah, wow. Like, oh, they're they're fucking up some people too, like Fritz. Fuck FTW with Fritz. Yeah. Wow. Like what else? What, we have we have so much stories. It's just yeah. You know, like. Were those the, oh, oh, we have a lot. Were those the two yeah, last, um, uh, two like national tours that that demise is gone on? More, that was, okay. But those were the to me. I, I enjoy those because I, regardless of whatever happened, we still came out having fun. Yeah, yeah. The other times that we did, we didn't really tour like that, but we went a couple of shows here, a couple sure. of shows around the neighbor states, or a little further, you know. Like starting hotel, playing with a whole bunch of different bands, you know. Yeah, it's just epic stuff, and I don't know, it's just fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Now we can look at it. Back then, it was like (laughs) (laughs) Oklahoma City was a fun set. Was no Oklahoma. Oh, really? It was 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 like twelve annual. So Uh, we had to do nice festival. Oh, wow. Two, it's three, three days because the first is meeting. Yeah, yeah. But we had the entire first floor of the hotel. Wow. The venue was inside the hotel, yeah. and across the street was like all type of food. And we played there's videos on YouTube on this, and yes, we play. Uh, it's funny because Matando Guero from Brujeria. Ah, and we, oh this is gonna sound racist, sorry, but we had Matando Guero means killing white people. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's kind of intriguing when you're singing Matando Guero, and then the crowd is all white. Go Matando Guero. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 of course, of course. Uh, serious, yeah. <laughs> And we, it was, that was a, that was to me a very top notch event. And yeah, somebody stole the six, six, uh, what was it, six, six, six number or some shit like that from the hotel? All the sixes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like, funny how we went to eat, uh, like to that the restaurant next to the hotel, and a bunch of metalheads are eating everybody, yeah, know, yeah. looking at the friends of the locals, <laughs> and the sheriff is there with his uh-huh. gun, like just eyeing us. <laughs> yep. there. I bought that and then. And, and, and a few of those people with the guns out. They yep. don't care, so... Yeah. But the guys, that's right. It's yeah. a fun time. Like, to me, that's one of my favorite animals and stuff like that. And it's like, there's all the favorite ones, but that one, we were all just... We owned the place. Yeah, yeah. And it was all us, all floors. Yeah, and all oh, spectacular. You weren't there, but one of our, one of our brothers uh, gave him a roach. They, they were smoking in the room, right? Yeah. I was there. You were there? Okay. Yeah, him yeah. You say this, man. You tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> you tell the story. <laughs> it's not going to be like, where do we smoke? <laughs> but I don't care about the story. Yeah. Well, his expertise that is best part to run this hot shower and go to the bathroom. <laughs> so we smoking and then the vapor is coming down under the door. And everybody's like, is there a hotel on fire? Man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then smoke out also, you know, hot water. <laughs> and he comes out, he goes, what happened, guys? And all that steam's coming out. Like, and the other guy's, um, I don't want to give his name because his yeah. He goes, uh, one of my brothers goes, dude, you got all that shit from one roach? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, I was laughing. I don't know if I got contact or whatever, but I was cracking the fuck up because that was, that was a Kodak moment. If you want to Kodak. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it just funny. came out on that smoke. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like something like this that he took in. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, um, well, well, you all have been mentioning your club uh, a few times. Do you all want to say more about it and and talk about like uh, you know your colors, some and and all of that that you have on? Sure, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, am I on? Yeah, you get action. NYDM is uh, New York Death Militia. Founding members is Will from Mortician and Randall Salwin and Lucy Ferra, Elena from Dominican Republic. Uh, it started. Early in the 90s, but yeah. it became more official in the, in the early 2000s. Uh, we have grown. We have a lot of chapters across the world, basically. Yeah. And it's a kind of like a family thing. Wherever there's a patch, regardless if you don't know that person, you approach that person, and you know it's family. Yeah. And we will look out if you go on tour and you're in a band, and you end up in West Bubblefuck, and there's a chapter there. <laughs> they will take care of you. Wow. So it's looking out for one another. You know, sure. there's, there's always a good, you know rotten apples here and there so in everything you do there's always that bad apple but yeah 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 we try to go above and beyond when it comes to that this is the Bronx <laughs> <laughs> like you know we, we're like to me the Bronx chapter is a family yeah. I don't have that many friends I don't really associate myself I know a lot of people but I don't hang out yeah sure if we do something or they invite me so it's a different thing because it's not just because of the club to yeah. me they're more than the club yeah 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 you know 
I know Mel, he's not part of the club, and, you know, he's doing his own thing, and I'm the type of person that I give, let people do their own thing. If they call, if they call, I'm not a social person. Like I said, I don't call people that much. And with this chapter, it actually shows me that there's people there that I could connect with or if reach out to or if they need. We all look out for one another. Yeah. That's my chapter. And I, all the chapters do the same thing, but it's different. We know them. Sure. They're family, too, but... The connection, me person, talking for myself, yeah, that is in this chapter is above club. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure all the chapters feel the same about their own members, and it's a beauty. Wherever you go, you see a color. You don't need to feel worried about you don't know nobody because, you know, right now, like like I said, uh, the annual is coming up and it's going to be in Houston, Texas, Houston, Texas, or where? The dissection is oh, the Oh, I band. see. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's going to be. Three day, two days, but the third day is usually they get there early to like do the meet and greet and talk so everybody can network and meet each other, one another. And that's about it, you know. Right now, I'm the active uh, international president and uh, Randy Cashner from Wisconsin is the second international president. Wow. We try to keep two just in case one falls, you know. Sure, sure. Same thing with everything else in the chapter. But um, that's about it. I don't know. Any questions? You want yeah, yeah, yeah. Free, you know? when, when did the Bronx chapter come about? Do you remember? Um, that was like around... A year or two before you joined. So, uh, 2008? I think 2008, 2007, 2008. I see. I see. And other than Demise, are there other um, bands that are associated with? Any band that has a patch yeah. is considered a white band. Oh, I mean uh, with the Bronx um, Oh, with, with the Bronx, Bronx chapter. You know, uh, well, Steve. Oh, okay. He's, okay. Uh, he's, he, he lives in Brooklyn now, but yeah. uh, he has his own band, so he's considered a Bronx band or yeah. a uh, club band too. So. And then demise or whatever project, you know, it's up to you if you want to be, you know, if you wear the patch, if you it's want like to be. my solo project. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah I it's see. Like, we don't force it. It's up to sure. you. Like, I'm part of this. Okay, I, I want my band to be on this. Sure, you know? sure. Um, so, uh, there's there's a couple final questions that I'll, I'll ask you all. But before we do so, are there other things about demise that you all want to say? I mean, you know, you could talk about maybe... Um, what you're up to now or future plans if you'd like you don't have to but yeah, yeah we've been working on a you know, new album for like we started working quite a few years ago and it's on and off we haven't been very active last couple of years but the, some uh, material is already record, recorded written recorded uh, when we get to it we would like to uh, not waste it and, and, and release it so so it's gonna take some time probably but sure we hope that it's gonna come to the light and we'll see where, where it takes us yeah because uh, like uh, we everyone's busy yeah, yeah we're yeah. family and it's like that's what we that's the cool thing that right now for me personally like we could come back to it yeah that's and right like, if we decide not to do it anymore then you know we can do it but it's like a job it's not like yo that's right you gotta so be the best. There's no deadline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, we so just sure. take our time, taking priority of family and uh, the work or whatever, health, or whatever, and we little by little we, act, we started working on things so, or whatever. You know? Yeah. And that's uh, that new album's gonna it's, it's, good. it's good. Yeah. It's gonna be sick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so far just the raw material. You know, we got. I'm gonna say special guesses and certain things in there. Okay. I gotta give names. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, it's, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. And, uh, and Greg has a mandolin track on a song or two. I think so. And the hippie, the hippie from Toledo has oh, a guest man. vocal spot. <laughs> 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 the bump. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, Mel's a little roach in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, you know. It's, it's, we're just adulting, basically. That sure. We're doing. And whenever we get the chance, we're talking in there. We haven't, this is the first time that we have seen each other in a while because everybody's busy, my yeah. schedule, his yeah. schedule. Yeah. And, you know, he's, like I said, he's a, a new father. He's a, yeah. You know, he's enjoying that. I have three kids, so two of them are twins, 26 years old, and they already, you know, live, live on their own. Yeah. But, you know, as a parent, you always see them as time That's right. Matter what. Yeah. And him, he's now enjoying, enjoying that that growth uh -huh. this yeah this is awesome <laughs> yeah absolutely um so a question that it's always fun to, to hear all the different ways people answer it um do you think there's 
well, you t actually talked about it a lot already, but do you think there's uh, a Bronx uh, metal sound? And if so, how would you describe it? I, I would say like very in your face, you know, very aggressive, you know, very, you know, with spice, you know, with vigor and everything like that, yeah. you know, some melody. You know, I think that the Bronx sound has, you know, it has to have like kind of an edge to it. Yeah. And I feel like I feel like all the bands, you know, all the bands from the Bronx have that because I think that's just part of what the Bronx is about. You know, what I'm saying they get in your face, you know, straightforward, and you know, just letting you know. You yeah. Know what I'm saying I, I feel like you know, I'll sound, I'll sound let's just let's everybody know, you know, where we're from. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Uh, where, let us know, like you know, the Bronx is stepping up. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you know, all all the bands have like that ferocity about them. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing. There's nothing la di da about you know Bronx hardcore, Bronx death metal. You know what I'm yep. saying? La metal, period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like it's just straightforward coming at you. You know what I'm saying? It's like you know it's hard. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you know if you're a Bronx fan, you got that dog in you. You know? What yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. That that's why I feel like that's what I feel like the Bronx uh, sound is. You know what I'm saying? To the point, edgy and straightforward, coming at your ass. Yeah. Thank you, Mel. Um, I, I think if, if we had a sound, it would be like that drop beat from the North Carolina <laughs> 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 But to me, uh, I think it's the other way around. What does, what, you know, not a Bronx sound, but what does attitude, mm -hmm. what sound would attitude have? Yeah. Because that's what everybody projects individually in, the, in their music, attitude. Yeah. Bigger, whatever you know, you know, you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, sure, so sure, sure. I think that's my look on it. Like everybody's different, so they you can't pinpoint one song. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more about the attitude. Like yeah. Iron Hat's attitude, District Nine attitude, our attitude is not the same. But right. there's something there. We're pissed off. We're mad. We're happy. Whatever it is, yeah. that's the song. Yeah, absolutely. Greg, what do you yeah, think? I agree with them both. They explored the, the topic to the fullest. <laughs> Nothing to add. <laughs> Nothing to add. Okay. Um, well, do any of you want to add any final closing things? It could be shout outs, it could be just final thoughts. Anything you want to add at the end here? I mean, for me, it will be, you know, shouting out to Gigi, um, Aisha, Gigi, yeah. you know, the guys from my race, the guys from the Club Sandwich, you know, that's you, Mel. That's me, yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, it's my fault. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, just a shout out, Chucky, Isaac, <laughs> you know, those people know him from high school. And, you know, I, a lot of people that we have met throughout this process that we still in touch, even though we don't hang out as much, but yeah. It's good to know that they're still out there kicking, and you know they're not they're not laying down to rep, you know, to die. They're still kicking, and kicking out, and doing their thing. Yeah, and that's about it for me. Next, yeah, I'd like to shout out for all the musicians that we played with, all the bands that we played with, all the friends that always supported us and helped us out. Uh, of course, all the fans, and of course the kind of idea family. There you go. Great, thank you, Greg. Mel. Okay, so. Go and say, you know, shout out to all the people, you know, back then and now, like in the Bronx scene, you know, you know, making the music that, you know, making it represented in a way that they're represented, in the, you know, that they're representing. Also, uh, I, you know, definitely thank, you know, thank the fans for past and present, you know, thanking, you know, thank all the people like Gigi, Aisha, you know, all the people that's, you know, that's involved in the scene, you know, all the bands like Billy Club Sandwich. I rate Fan 451, District 9, Stuff, Who for Purchase, yeah. Blackout, Go to Mentis. Who else? Who am I missing? Who am I missing? Uh, Shaquan, of course. Shaquan. I add Shaquan in there. Hellbound. You know, Hellbound, Driven by Hatred. You know, you know all, all the bands that, you know, all, all the bands that submitted Demolition Hammer. You know, like all the bands that, like, you know, that that just, like, had, you know, had that sound that came, came with it and everything like that, brought their own flavor. You know, you know, very thankful to, for them, and you know, you know, sending love to everybody and to see everything like that. And plus, I'm sending love to you for, you know, allowing us to tell this story and you know, let people know, you know, like that, you know, people that wasn't there that has the intrigue, you know, about you know what go go went went on in this wonderful scene of ours. You know, the story had to be told, and thanks for allowing us to do that. 
Thank okay. you. One more thing. Thank you for putting this together. So that's a big, that's a shout out to you, Steve, for yes. making the Bronx relevant again, in a sense, you know, because this is something that I was inspecting. Like, you know, it's good to know that there's somebody with a passion for the Bronx still, for the scene, not just the Bronx, but for the music scene that's willing to do the work that you're doing to put us out there more and to kind of like, um, Immortalize, immortalize us. Immortalize, yeah, 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 for sure. Because that's what it is. It's like maybe when I'm gone, when we all gone, somebody might find a book or just the files online and be like, "Oh shit, let me see who's that great guy, who's this male," and you are the cause of that. And I appreciate you and thank you for yeah, thank you for having us and thank you for watching us.